and Joe Tipperello alongside former pro and college football coach Ed Biles. And Ed, this game was originally scheduled for the campus on uh, the University of Houston at Robertson Stadium. And uh, that's uh, a point of controversy as Arkansas got this one moved indoors to the dome. Yeah, they got it moved indoors and, and you know, still a 100-yard field. But the Houston people very upset. They had the homecoming schedule over there. They would have liked to play it on their campus, but uh, they had no choice. Arkansas demanded it would be played inside here in the dome. Arkansas felt that it would be unfair. They would be the only conference team having to play at Robertson Stadium, and they said the field conditions weren't that good. So they got the game moved indoors. Now, the Cougars not only fired up about that, but they were manhandled by Arkansas last year, 57-27 up in Arkansas. Yeah, their defense would like to avenge that if they possibly can. And again, that will be one of the keys, whether the uh, Houston defense can stop the running game of Arkansas. Arkansas is averaging 242 yards a game. Arkansas, as you say, can move the football, but the strength of the Houston team is their defense. On the other side of the ball, you wonder, can Houston move it against not a, a, not a bad Arkansas defense? Well, they haven't scored very much, and that's been one of the problems. Young offensive line, three sophomores, two freshmen. If they have a chance to win tonight, that offensive line will have to do an outstanding job. Houston, they've been struggling. One in five overall. They're 0-3 in the conference. Arkansas, 5-1, and, and they are 3-0 and in the conference. And they come in 13th in one poll, ranked 14th in the other. So we should have a dandy for you here tonight in the Astrodome in Houston as the Houston Cougars take on the Arkansas Razorbacks. We're back with more here on Home Sports Entertainment. Parks is an all-conference selection. Beckett follows his brother and his dad who played at Arkansas. In the backfield for the Razorbacks, they're all Texan. They're all Texan. Greg Thomas, Joe Johnson, Sammy Van Dyke, Marshall Foreman, and James Sebus. And, of course, Sebus and uh, Marshall Foreman are Houston products. And as far as Arkansas, on the other side of the ball, they're pretty good over there. Oh, Wayne Martin, Tony Chirico, David Shell, and Carl Bradford. Chirico is really a talented defensive player. He leads the team in tackles for losses. He'll get involved. He'll fight the Battle of Cherico. And as far as the linebackers for the Razorbacks, David Dudley, Albert Harris, and Ricky Williams. Dudley's their leading tackler and a good one. And in the secondary for Arkansas, they all can run. A lot of speed. Otis Lloyd, Charles Washington, Richard Brothers, and Steve Atwater. All of them 4-5. Bill Yeoman of the Houston Cougars is in his 25th year. The gentleman with the silver hair, he'd like to see his kids come up with a big effort here tonight. And on the offensive line, they are awfully young. You can emphasize the youngsters when you talk about this group. Kane, Moser, Britton, Gant, Baines, and Thomas. Three freshmen, three sophomores. There's a question as to who's starting at quarterback tonight. Will it be Davis or will it be Landry? Probably Davis, John Stankus, Sloan Hood, LeBlanc, and Brown. And in the defensive line, they're pretty good there. Hoskins, McManus, Montgomery, Warren, and Bearden, they've done a great job against the run so far this year. And Gary McGuire leading the team in tackles. And in the uh, secondary for the Cougars, they may see some balls in the air tonight from Arkansas. We're about to see the ball in the air. And Charles Thornton, Jones, and Jackson as the game gets underway. It is kicked off. And coming up with the ball is Rhodes for Houston. He fumbles it and picks it up. And he'll get across the 20, and he'll get a lot more to the 38-yard line. And he's tripped up by the kicker, Franklin. That was Kenny Franklin, a freshman out of Houston, tripping up the return man. And Houston will start at their own 38-yard line. The officials, Dixon Holman, with Shockley, Pfeiffer, Rogers, Brown, Lewis, and Weeks on the crew. That was a 38-yard return. First down, Houston, and it is Mark Davis, the junior out of Dallas, starting at quarterback for the Cougars. First down from the Houston 38. A running play. And this is John Stankus off the left side. He got about four yards, and Albert Harris out of Brown Mills, New Jersey, a linebacker, got him for Arkansas. Well, they just went straight right at him on that very first play. Trying to establish the line of scrimmage. And one thing you can do with young offensive linemen is go straight ahead and not make it too complicated for them. Houston would like to run this football down the field and put up some points in their initial possession. Hood is 42 and 16. Stankus, the running back. Second and seven for Houston. Davis rolling. May throw. He's in trouble. He's in a lot of trouble. 
He lost yardage all the way back to the 32-yard line. And coming through for the Arkansas Razorbacks, Wayne Martin. We talked about him at the top. And he had help from Carl Bradford. Well, it's just a rollout play action trying to go to his left. Martin gets loose and comes up and going to tackle him, make his third sack of the season. And now the Cougars find themselves in a situation they didn't want to get into. Third and very long. Third and 16. Brings up third down and 16. Let's see if Davis will put it in the air. Jet Brown and Dwayne LeBlanc are the wide receivers. They'll run it. And Sloan Hood will get to the 38-yard line, which was the original line of scrimmage. And Steve Atwater, the free safety, made the tackle. Well, three plays and out. One thing that the Cougars don't want to get into is the kicking con punting contest here this evening. There's a big difference in the punters. Simon Rodriguez is a freshman averaging nearly 37 yards per kick. Back awaiting it is a youngster by the name of Washington, and the kicker was hit. A flag is down, and Washington returns the ball to the 30-yard line. Charles Washington with that return. But they came in, and they hit the kicker, a personal foul against Arkansas. We'll see Houston come away with this. And a first down. So a big mistake off the top here against the Arkansas Razorbacks. They tried to block the kick. Well, they uh, roughed the kicker, Simon Rodriguez. No question. This wasn't even close. There was no... It wasn't even close. The official was able to make that decision without thinking. We'll take another look here. Rodriguez had to go to his left for the snap. And coming through. And one thing about those kind, everybody knows. None of the coaches disagree. None of the fans disagree with that call. David Good. Dudley, an outside linebacker, hit him in. Good break for the Cougars, though. First and 10 for Houston. The ball is at the Arkansas. 47 yard line so new life here for the Cougars on first down the option it's kept by the quarterback who gets to the 40 yard line and that is Mark Davis tripped up by Tony Cherico the all conference nose guard a very quick player out of Shawnee Mission Kansas and there's some numbers for Davis his brother Danny used to play here and one of the things that maybe Mark Davis learned last week watching Gerald Landry run the option was the ability to keep the ball Landry hung on to a lot last year. I mean, last week in the game against SMU, Davis did the same thing here early in the game. Here's a good down for Houston. Second and three from the Arkansas 40. They could do just about anything here. Up, Tony. Up, Tony. It will be a running play to Stankus, who carries inside the 40 down near the 37-yard line. It looks awfully close to a first down. Cherico again on the stop. And that will be short of the first down by a matter of inches. We'll call it. Are they going to give them a first down? No, it's it's third and short. They have a first down up on the uh, scoreboard here, oh, but it's going to be third and maybe about a foot and a half. Oh, that's close. I'm not too sure that uh, I would have asked for measurement on it on that uh, call. The ball just shy of the 37 of the Razorbacks. Hood and Stankus are the running backs for Davis. And a first down for Houston as Stankus got to the 35-yard line. And Carl Bradford, a defensive end, a junior from Paris, Texas, made the hit for the Razorback. Well, so far, Jerry, that young offensive line, when they're going straight ahead, seemed to be a good, uh, doing a good job of firing off the ball, getting off the mark, and getting into the people. There you take a shot of it now. You see him going straight ahead. You see uh, Joey Bain trying to move defensive linemen straight back off there. And that'll help those young offensive linemen if they can Go right at him. First down from the Arkansas 35 for the Cougars. We're just underway. There's no score. Houston in possession. Davis in trouble. Nice defensive play there again by Wayne Martin. And we've called his name a couple of times already. He gets involved. Well, he just came to the outside of uh, Clay Caney, the offensive left tackle, and made, uh, made the play without anyone laying a glove on him. Here you see him as he comes right down the line. Watch him come from the outside here. And just, just a missed block. A loss of two. So uh, Dwayne LeBlanc, number 14, coming in with a play from the far side of the field. The Houston bench play brought in. It's second and 12 for the Cougars. And what will Davis do here? Will he put it up? Arkansas showing blitz. They're not coming. We are experiencing difficulty with the audio portion of our program. Please stand by as we are working to correct the problem. We will continue with the video portion.
ball got three points in a 44 yard field goal by Chip Brondike his longest of the year and now Marshall Foreman awaits the kickoff here in Brondike who handles all placements for the Cougars will be the man to kick it off for Houston as they have a three to nothing lead Marshall Foreman the only deep man for the Razorbacks it will be short taken by one of the up men across the 20 across the 30 to the 32 yard line and returning that was Tony Holmes he is a freshman running back out of Little Rock Arkansas wonder how they found him right in their own backyard yeah scoring drive took nine plays about 35 yards Used five minutes off the clock and of course the 44 yard field field goal was Brown Dyke longest of the year that was a good start for the Cougars Greg Thomas is the quarterback for Arkansas. They run the wishbone offense. They won't put him in the air very often. First down from their 34. Here is the pitch to the trailing back, and they're going to get good yardage out of this one out near midfield is Sammy Van Dyke, a junior from Dallas. Robert Jones, the free safety, brought him down at the 48-yard uh, line. That is a gain of 14 yards and an Arkansas first down. They make their presence felt right away, don't they? Yeah, they really did, and uh, the Cougars lost contain on the outside, and they didn't have anyone coming up on the inside. They really didn't react to the uh, first uh, option play very well. First and 10, Arkansas at their 48-yard line. A good look at the quarterback, Thomas. He's from San Angelo, Texas. That's Marshall Foreman. He fumbled the ball or did he? No, he held on the way he bounced around in there. I thought it came loose. He crossed midfield, got to the Houston 49, a modest gain of three yards. And at the bottom for the Cougars was Derek Hoskins, the uh, defensive end called the rush end. And yes, he is a co cousin of uh, George, George Foreman, so people aren't wondering about that all, all the way. So if they start a fight, he's the guy to get on your side. Second, call it seven. They're in Houston territory at the 49. This is Van Dyke again, and Van Dyke close to another Arkansas first down as he powers to the Houston 42. And David Bearden, a defensive end, and the safety Jones again were there. That's going to be close, and they're going to have to ask for a measurement. Well, that was a good play because of the counter play. Fast as McGuire and Harper were reacting uh, last week's ball game to run the plays, they felt they'd probably keep them honest. They started one way, came back the other way. And then now they're measuring for that first down. Good call by the Arkansas coaching staff early in the ball game. They needed seven yards for the first down, and Sammy Van Dyke got seven yards in one millimeter. One millimeter. One silly little millimeter. Still a first down, wasn't it? Still a first down. That's all you need. First and ten, Arkansas. The ball is at the Cougars' 42-yard line. Houston leading 3 to nothing. Arkansas with a drive going. Greg Thomas, their quarterback, he's a junior. He's completed 62% of his passes. Unbalanced line, Jerry. A new look for the Razorbacks. Foreman with the carry, and he's got another first down and a lot more inside the 25. Gary McGuire, the linebacker we talked about at the start, had to make the tackle, but much too far downfield for the liking of Bill Yeoman. Well, they jumped into that unbalanced line. That's probably the first that first they've seen it. They came down to get the double team inside. That's what made the play. The double team in there. Now he does it. Foreman does an excellent job of running once he got through the line. 19-yard gain. That's another first down for Arkansas. The ball sitting on the Houston 23-yard line. Donnie Centers is the wide receiver coming to the left. There's a good look at Marshall Foreman and his numbers. First down, Arkansas. And the running play this time off the right side and carrying the ball is Joe Johnson. He's just a sophomore, but he's a good one. McGuire brought him down as he carried inside of the 20-yard line down close to the 18-yard uh, line. A pickup of five. Now that play again, they're really just trying to keep those two inside linebackers, McGuire and Harper, honest. They start the fullback one way, and they bring the back, uh, back across the other way, and if they're keying that fullback, it really messes up his, uh, the linebacker's key. Brian White over the ball at center. Second and five from the Houston 18. Running the option, it's Thomas. He keeps, he's hit. Didn't get much, got to the 16. And Johnny Jackson, the right corner, played that one in good shape. Yes, he did. Now, a, you have to really be a disciplined football team to play this type of offense. Someone is, has to be responsible for the inside play. You have to have someone assigned to take the quarterback, someone from the outside container. You also have to have that extra guy coming because of the possibility of missed tackles. Very difficult offense to defense, and you really have to stay in your lanes and do your job. 
This could be a key down, third and three. Arkansas from the Houston 16. They have a wing on the right. The give is to Foreman, and Foreman powers his way to what looks like another Arkansas first down as Derek Hoskins brought him down with help from McGuire. And the Razorbacks come up with another first down, and they keep the football. Well, I'm sure Foreman's got some uh, fans here in the stands. He played at uh, Cy Fair here in Houston. And the Cougars take a timeout. Bill Yeoman and his staff want to talk it over as they call a timeout. We've got 6.56 left in the first quarter, and Houston leads it 3 to nothing. Southwest Conference football continues on Home Sports Entertainment right after this time. County. Arkansas will have a first and 10 at the Houston 12 yard line. The Cougars leading three to nothing on a Brown Dyke field goal of 44 yards, his longest field goal of the year. The Arkansas Razorbacks and their offensive line have been making things happen here in the first quarter on this first possession. They go double tight end set this time. First down from the Houston 12. Thomas. And not going very far is the running back Van Dyke. Glenn Montgomery, the nose guard, got some penetration there and shut things down, and Hoskins got his nose in there as well. And that, that time they shut down that counter And watch him step one way, and see him come back the other way with the back trying to lead in there to block on uh, McGuire, but the Montgomery, the nose guard, did an outstanding job of running around the block and making the play. They lost a yard. It's second and 11 for Arkansas from the Houston 13-yard line. They sent out a wide receiver. That's Shebest. And nice fake by the quarterback, Thomas, but he's in trouble. He wants to throw, and he'll eat the football and get out of bounds as he was chased out by Gary McManus. And one thing about the Razorbacks, their quarterbacks won't panic. They won't throw it up for grabs. They'd rather eat it and take the loss than give you a shot at the football. Well, it's a good thing they had that pressure because the, uh, they had someone open, wide, wide open down the end zone. I don't know if we've seen it or not now, but when he came out to hit this position, if he could have delivered the ball, they would have had a touchdown. But there's a lot of red jerseys are surrounding now. A loss of five on the play. They need 16 yards on this third down play. Third and 16 from the Houston 18-yard line. The Cougar defense is toughened. I think I would cover Sheba. And they also have centers in there as a wide receiver. Thomas, the quarterback draw, and he is going to get good yardage, but doesn't get a first down as he gets to the six. Robert Jones, the free safety, brought him down, and I feel that was the design play. No question the design play, Jerry. He recognized, or they recognized that apparently down that area, the Cougars are in a man-to-man -man coverage. You see, there comes a blitzing linebacker. Now it just opens up. Everybody else is running man-to-man. -man. They have to uh, come back off of the receivers. And that's very close to being a first down, but they're going to have to settle for a field goal attempt. Kendall Trainer is their kicker. He's four of five in field goals this year. The holder will be Jim Simpson. The spot will be the 13, a 23-yard attempt. And we have ourselves a tied ball game. Dixon Holman says it's good, and that's good enough for us as Arkansas has come right back and tied this ball game at 3-3. And uh, a field goal each side as Arkansas ties Houston here in the first quarter. Kendall Trainer got it, a sophomore place kicker out of Fridnia, Kansas. So Trainer hits the three-pointer to tie it. The kick covered 23 yards, and the score is tied at 3-3. And I think Houston has to feel not so bad, Ed, because they prevented them from getting a touchdown and held them to a field goal. Well, the defense has been strong down in those areas. Both teams had the ball for approximately five minutes. The first time they had their hands on the ball, both of them settled for field goals. There is a Razorback mascot, and here is the place kicker trainer. He's out of Kansas. Good concentration as he approached that ball. Good foot. Look at him taking a good look at it there. Ah, well, I do this all the time. Nothing to get excited about. Patches over on the head. Goes off to the sideline. Kenny Franklin, number 29, will kick off. Back awaiting the kick is Vernell Ramsey for Houston. And he is joined by Reggie Rose, who returned the opening kickoff. You know, when he bobbled that first one, it almost, uh, the Razorbacks relaxed and almost opened up the return for it. That happens sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. It's amazing that uh, that would happen, but 
Well, Houston's going to get a shot at the football here in this 3-3 ball game. 5.36 left in the first quarter. This will come down to Ramsey. He'll take it a yard in. The 10, the 20, the 30, and a collision at the 33-yard line, and that's the kicker, Frank Lanou. Met the return man head on. I hate it when those kids duck their heads like that. That's not the way to tackle, is it? Well, most most of those kickers aren't, aren't used to uh, making tackles. Of course, there's Arkansas scoring drive. 10 plays, 60 yards, 4 minutes and 12 seconds. And, of course, the field. They wound up with a field goal. Two good returns by the Cougars. So they have decent field position. They'll start this possession at their 33 yard line. The quarterback is Mark Davis. He's out of Dallas South Oak Cliff High School. He's completed 46% of his passes. He'll run the option. He'll keep. He'll get to the 40-yard line. Ricky Williams was the first man to get him, and Williams out of Little Rock, who is a cello player when he plays music, plays headaches when he plays football because he'll hit you. All regional in music. Is he? Yeah. Said he was a cello player. He was all regional in music. You know, you got to make room for him because there's always room for cello. Arts and science major. Second and three. Houston. From their 40. A pass to the tight end. First down to the 48 as Thomas caught his second reception of the night and the safety at water got him. Thomas is just a freshman. Well, you see, Thomas, he just goes down downfield. Now Davis looking for him all the way. He turns, catches the ball, realizes he's going to get hit. Ball forward for a couple extra yards. But the important thing, he looked it all the way in. There's his stats for the year. And he will line up this time on the left side. Houston with a first down from their 48. Arkansas bouncing around on that defensive front. And Stankus. Almost had to fight Davis for the handoff as he got near midfield. Again, Wayne Martin on the tackle. That was not the smoothest exchange we've seen. No, well, the defensive line got some penetration. They were playing on Houston's side of the ball. And that's the whole key to stopping running in the defensive line. Now, watch as they come down the line. You see all those white jerseys. They're a half yard or yard into Houston's backfield. Makes it very difficult for the exchange. Also makes it very difficult to gain any yardage when they push you back that way. Second and nine, Houston. Unbalanced Houston. We'll see how Arkansas reacts here. Houston didn't handle it very well when they saw it defensively. Oh, and that was going to drive Bill Yeoman crazy. An ill-advised pitch as he came back for Sloan Hood and coming up with the football was Ricky Williams. That's the ball that Davis should have held on to. Well, it really will drive him crazy because to the, to the unbalanced side, they had two tackles. Watch the double team. The double team it drove the man down inside. The backer filled real quick, and of course, he, they made a poor pitch, and now it's a turnover, and turnovers is what kill you in football games. We had the Baines and Kane right side by side, and they did a good job on a double team, but the backer just shuffled and made the play. And it will especially hurt you when you turn it over and you're into the field. Arkansas starts at the Houston 45. And the running play this time features Derek Thomas out of Paducah, Kentucky, a senior running back. It gets down to the 42-yard uh, line. Robert Harper, that other Houston linebacker, and he's also a good one, made the tackle. Tell you one, they play a lot of players, and Duke of Paducah has got a pretty good average there. 50, ca 50 carries for 201 yards at 4.0. Number 72 is Freddie Childress. He's the biggest man to ever play at Arkansas. He weighs 310 pounds. He's the right guard. Second and seven for Arkansas. And this running play to Joe Johnson. He tries to turn the corner. Houston did a pretty good number on Johnson there as he gets what appears to be yardage inside the 40-yard line. And Orsby Crenshaw, the left corner, helps string it out. Now, now the defensive line does a good job. As in, now he has to take it to the outside. And, of course, Bearden underplayed the ball. He went to the inside. If he'd have stayed out there and contained, he could have made the play for a loss. Arkansas will need four yards. It is third and four. The ball at the Houston 39. Watch Shebest. He's the wide receiver to the right. They have a man on the right wing. Third and four, Arkansas. And Thomas wants to throw, and he looks for Shebest, and he throws it. It is complete inside the 30. That's a first down as Shebest was knocked down by Orsby Crenshaw. 
One of the things that ha also happens to you when you play a wishbone team like this, Jerry, is you spend so much time against the running game, you're almost forced to play zone. The Cougars are playing zone, and of course he goes down and just finds the opening in that zone. You can see the linebackers underneath, and he works down, works for the opening. Thomas just plays pitch and catch with him. She best caught it for a 12-yard gain and an Arkansas first down. She best who caught 51 passes as a sophomore. He's now a senior, caught 20 a year ago. First down, Arkansas. Thomas wants to throw it again, but we'll keep it. Boy, he can dance, can he? Down to the 24. He was dragged down by Glenn Montgomery, the nose guard from Gretna, Louisiana. Oh, what a play by Montgomery. Get all the way out there because they had lost contain, and he really came from inside out. Now he's looking downfield for Shebus, and he's not open. The Cougars doing a good job. But when he makes his move, Montgomery comes all the way from the inside. That's a tough play to make. Get off down that about 15 yards running laterally to make a tackle. Second and seven, Arkansas. 3-3 three, three ball game. We're in the first quarter. Razorbacks are moving following a Houston turnover. This is Foreman. Houston stops him as he got down close to the 21-yard uh, line. Tackled by Gary McGuire. He is a junior out of Silsby. He made 16 tackles in a game against Arkansas last year. Now they're trying to double team in there, and they do a good job of stuffing the hole. He, as he veers it to the outside, he made all that yardage on his own. But again, take a look at the pursuit of the Cougars. There's about seven red jerseys on that tackle. Defensive people are really hustling, doing an excellent job for Houston. 3-3 ball game. Arkansas faced with a third and four. The ball just shy of the Houston 21-yard line. They have two wide receivers this time and a wing on the left. A new look for them. Thomas with time. Now he'll roll left. He'll be in trouble. Buys himself a little time. Gets a block. And will get knocked down short of the first down by Randy Thornton, the strong safety. And now a little shoving match as some of the youngsters get mixed up. And Thomas... Lost his helmet, lost part of his jersey. He didn't like the uh, treatment there as he got popped by Thornton, and Thornton will hit you. Well, give the Cougar defense or man-to-man -man coverage. There's no one open. They had great coverage downfield. There's still no one open. They stay with their people. Now there's nothing for him to do except run the ball. There you see Thornton coming to the picture, making the initial tackle, and he gets some help. And his helmet just blew off. I think he got a little bit upset about something that wasn't anybody's fault. Houston's got a man down. That's Robert Harper, the linebacker, who uh, played the first four games a year ago, then got knocked out for the rest of the year with a knee injury, and he's been shaken up here. He's ailing. Well, the one thing they don't need is any more injuries. They've had, they lost a lot of players early in the season, and now when you start losing them to injury, when you don't have a lot of depth, it makes it very difficult for you, especially this time of the year. That uh, defensive play by Thornton, as he kept the quarterback to only a two-yard gain means it's fourth and two facing Arkansas. And Arkansas still has their offensive people out there. As the quarterback is over, as we see Harper up, and he goes right through the Arkansas huddle to say something to some of the Arkansas players and Bill Yeoman trying to get him out of there. Harper is really a tough kid. He's out of Kansas City. He had something to say to some of those Razorbacks. He didn't like the treatment he got. And I think Ken Hatfield... Well, it looked like he was going to go for it. Then he sent the field goal unit on, and we're going to see the place kicker, Kendall Trainer, again as Harper jogs off. Billy Oman going off as well, and this field goal attempt will be just inside the 26-yard line, so it'll be nearly a 36-yard attempt out of the hole to Jim Simpson. Looking to put Arkansas out in front, and Trainer is good again. They're counting by threes here tonight. Counting by threes tonight as Arkansas takes a 6-3 lead on the second field goal of the night by Kendall Trainer. Well, Hatfield played it by the book. Take the points when you get the opportunity rather than gamble and maybe not, uh, maybe not make the three points. Boy, that Shebus is interesting to watch. Out of MacArthur, MacArthur High School here in Houston. Boy, he just reminds me so much of Mike Renfro, Steve Largent, Tim Smith, that type of receiver. And there's room for those guys, right? Oh, yeah. All they do is catch the ball, make first downs, and over a long career, you look up there and you see Charlie Joyner and Steve Largent as leading receivers in the NFL. So Arkansas, ranked 13th by the UPI and number 14 by AP, has taken a 6-3 lead, their first lead of the night. You know, Arkansas has never beaten Texas and Houston in the same year since the Cougars entered the Southwest Conference back in 1976. However, they did accomplish it once 
But that was way back in 1954 before Houston joined the Southwest Conference. And as we said at the start of the show, uh, Jerry, the turnovers would be a big key. That was a turnover by the Houston offense and led directly to that field goal. Vernell Ramsey is the man nearest to you. To his left is Reggie Rhodes. As the place kicker on the uh, kickoffs is Kenny Franklin, a freshman from Houston Aldine High School who has come back and is performing for the Razorbacks. He's going to kick it off for the third time tonight. Arkansas leading 6-3. to three. We've got 10 seconds left in the first quarter. Now, Houston has had some good returns here tonight. Rhodes from the 8. Out near the 28-yard line. And on the stop for Arkansas on the special teams was Reggie Hall. Cougars doing a good job with that return, Jerry. They're cross-blocking it. The right side is dropping back and going over trying to get good good angles to block to the left. There's the, there's the field goal. Of course, the scoring drive. Six plays, 36 yards. Took three minutes and 42 seconds. And the left side is dropping back, trying to block to their right, trying to give an opening up there with cross block. First down, Houston from their 28. They turned it over the last time and saw Arkansas come away with three points to take the lead. And this is Sloan Hood bouncing out to the 35-yard line for a seven-yard gain. And Otis Lloyd, the rover, uh, sophomore out of Stuttgart, Arkansas, on the hit for the Razorbacks. And that should be the final play of the first quarter. And it is. So at the end of the first quarter, Arkansas with the lead here. You're watching Southwest Conference football on Home Sports Entertainment. In quarter, Houston trailing six to three, has the ball at their own 35 with a second and three. Jet Brown coming wide left. Wide right, they have Mike Rhodes, a tight end, set on the left in an unbalanced line, and this is Sloan Hood. He didn't get much that time. Got back to the line of scrimmage, and Wayne Martin pushed him back. They've been calling Martin's name a lot, haven't we? He's playing an outstanding ball game. I'm a little surprised to see the Cougars run sideways, so to speak. They're pulling both the guard and the tight end, trying to get back across there. Awful hard to get back with the quickness and speed of that Arkansas defense. Seem to be having pretty good... Uh, effects when they go straight at him, but running sideways, I think the quickness of Arkansas will give him problems. Third and two as you get a field eye view of things. Now we're back upstairs. They need two yards for a first down. Davis. He kept it, and he got a first down out to the 42-yard line as he picked up six, and Charles Washington, a cornerback, knocked him down. Good play by Mark Davis. I think, look, he's, he's coming right down the line of scrimmage. Now, watch you make a little fake here that takes the guy to the outside. He turns right up inside of him, and that's enough to pick up the first down. Good tackle by Charles Washington coming up there. Another Arkansas boy, Pine Bluff. And he's a senior. Had an interception in the game against Houston last year. That was won by Arkansas, 57-27. First down for the Cougars. Arkansas on top, 6-3 to three here. Sloan Hood. Didn't get much. Hood hit almost immediately. Tony Cherico, the uh, nose guard, was there along with Albert Harris. Well, when they try to run off tackle, that's kind of an off tackle play. That Cherico is going to slide down the, the line of scrimmage. And as long as that outside linebacker or defensive end hold their ground, Cherico is going to be in there making those kind of tackles. That's what I said earlier. When you fight him, you fight the battle of Cherico. Second and 10, Houston. Davis wanted to throw. He keeps it and gets near midfield. He looked like he wanted to throw. It found a bit of an opening, and he's got those quick feet. He got out to the 49-yard line for an eight-yard gain. Tried to look for the quick slant in, and there he's talking to Thomas as he came back. I don't know whether make Thomas uh, cross him up and what he, he ran. There's a good look at the first quarter stats. And of course, five first downs for Arkansas, three Houston. Arkansas, 74 yards of rushing, and that's a big difference. And they had 86 yards of total offense, and Houston only had 39. Both teams had the ball for you know, seven minutes apiece there. Big and difference was the one turnover, the one fumble. It, it led to Arkansas's three points that has them in front, three to nothing, or six to three at least. Davis has a first down and more. 
down to the Arkansas 35. They didn't contain him very well, did they, as Steve Atwater made the tackle. No, they're having a little, Arkansas will have a problem now with the unbound. You see Thomas releasing off the line. He's coming back to the short side. Arkansas was overshifted to the field and also the wide, wide side. Once he got outside, there was no one there to contain. And he shows enough sense to really just drive straight ahead and get as, as much at the end of the play as he could. Good call by the uh, coaching staff. That was a 15-yard pickup, and he has 27 yards on the night. First down from the Arkansas 36. Sloan Hood. He was stopped by Carl Bradford. Well, they tried to run a trap. Terry Moser came across to his right, but Sloan Hood uh, broke back to the outside. Either the trap hole wasn't there or Sloan Hood just missed the hole on that play. A pickup of two. Second and eight coming up for Houston. Sloan Hood is out of Gates High School here in Houston. He's a junior. He led the Cougars in rushing last year. And without their top rusher, Raymond Tate, who's out for the rest of the year with a fractured wrist. Davis has time, and that's almost intercepted. Almost intercepted by the linebacker, Harris, as they threw it for Rhodes, Mike Rhodes, the uh, sophomore wide receiver. Timing pattern, he tried to fake the running play. Now watch him come back here like he's going out to his left, turns right back, turns around, delivers the ball. Harris, uh, of course, he's got all that tape on his hands and looks like he's got boxing gloves on. <laughs> Six foot two, 230 pound uh, freshman. A little bit over anxious to intercept that one. Harris had an uncle and a cousin that played at Arkansas. As the players say, it hit him in a bad place, his hands. <laughs> Third and eight facing Houston. That is LeBlanc caught it, caught it for a first down and goes out at the 21. Charles Washington, the left corner, hustled him out with Wayne LeBlanc, a big target at 6'2", 204, went up for that ball, caught it, and picked up a Houston first down. Good job. He caught him in single coverage. Now watch as he comes out here now. He's just looking for LeBlanc all the way because he recognized they're in single coverage. Comes forward, delivers. Washington has backed off, having to respect the, the fact that LeBlanc might go deep. All he can do is catch the ball. Washington recovers and makes a tackle. Houston with the first down. They're at the Arkansas 20. A look at Bill Yeoman, the gentleman with the white hair without the headset. 6-3 lead Arkansas. Houston moving. Davis will run the option. This is Stankus turning the corner at the 10. Down to the two-yard line. John Stankus, the sophomore from Hollywood, Florida. And Otis Lloyd, the rover back, had to bring him down just before he could get into the end zone, and Sloan Hood gave him a heck of a block. But I run this option back to the short side or the, away from the unbalanced. You can see him coming down the line of the scrimmage, makes the pitch out. Arkansas loses their contain. Now all Stankus has to do is run. He turns it back up inside of Sloan Hood's block, drives it down through there. Now Arkansas having trouble adjusting to the unbalanced. They put the guard and two tackles to the right side of the center, and just a guard and a tackle to the left side when they're in that formation. That was an 18-yard pickup, first and goal from the two. And Davis is in trouble. The tight end was open over the middle, but he didn't have time to see him as Cherico got through there, and he brought Eric Witted, a linebacker. Well, he doesn't have a chance. He went to play action with a little bit of delay, but all of a sudden, there's a lot of, awful lot of folks coming in. There's a 57, Ricky Williams, and 39, Eric Wooded. They're in on top of him before he has a chance to deliver that ball. And Houston will take a timeout here as they want to talk it over. That's the second timeout taken by the Cougars. They want to talk it over. It looked like a good call because the tight end was open over the middle, but they didn't give him time to throw the ball. Well, the problem with play action down on the goal line, if the defense is bringing linebackers and you got that little bit of delayed action that they can the play action pass, that linebacker now a lot of times will come free because you normally your backs have to pick him up. That's exactly what happened there with Witted on a blitz. There was no one left to pick him up. He came clean and the best the uh, late uh, plans of men sometimes go astray. I think they had good thoughts on the plan and good design, and the tight end was open, but he never had a chance to get it to him. Obviously, that sign we just saw, feelings running strong here that Arkansas got this game moved to the Astrodome from Robertson Stadium on the campus of the University of Houston. We talked about that at the start of the 
broadcast tonight. Houston really wanted to play that game on campus. They felt the homecoming game being played on campus would really help renew enthusiasm here during a tough year, but Arkansas got a change. Yeah, and I think their students were all excited about talking to people over in Houston. They felt like early in the week, their ticket sales to their students was greater than it had been for a long time. And then when the announcement was made that they had to come back over to here, uh, it just dropped off. Second and goal, Houston. Now, now they're going to be in that unbound. That's the tight end there to your left. Just next to him is a guard, a guard, then two tackles over there. The ball is at the eight yard line. Davis throws short. This is Hood. Knocked out of bounds by Williams. He didn't get very much to the seven yard line. A pickup of one, and that didn't go as far as Houston had hoped. Well, you don't have an awful lot of time down there. You can see the tight end releasing, but as he comes out now, short field to cover, so you have to deliver it quick down in there. And you really don't want to throw it over the middle and uh, have it deflect down there and bounce off somebody. You want to make sure you throw a pretty secure, pretty safe pass down here. Well, the back line of the end zone becomes a 12th defender for you. And at the very least, if this play doesn't work, you can kick the field goal and tie this thing as Arkansas leads six to three. Third and goal from the seventh. And they're coming after Davis. Incomplete for Stankus. He was covered by Albert Harris, the linebacker. They threw it for the running back, and they had four people in the face of Mark Davis. Well, they had the blitz coming. It seemed like everyone was coming. And if he could have got it to him, Stankus would have walked in with it, but it's very difficult with all those folks up in your face. The charge was led by Williams, the linebacker, and Lloyd, the rover. So we're going to see a field goal attempt here. Chip Browndyke has hit one from 44 yards tonight to account for the Houston scoring. That was his longest this season. This will come from the 14, a 24-yard attempt out of the hold of Davis. Looking to tie the ball game, and he did. Well, we're dead even, folks. Six and six are score. Houston and Arkansas, 10-31 left in the first half. We'll return to the Astrodome in Houston right after this break from your local station. You're watching Southwest Conference Football on Home Sports Entertainment. Entertainment is intended solely for the non-commercial use of our viewing audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the expressed written consent of Home Sports Entertainment is prohibited. Announcers for this telecast are selected and employed by Home Sports Entertainment. Marshall Foreman will await the kickoff from this man, Chip Browndyke, who has just hit a 24-yard field goal to tie this ball game at 6-6. There is Foreman. He'll await the kickoff here. This ball game's all tied up at 6-6. Houston and Arkansas were in the second quarter at the Astrodome. This will be short. Foreman from the 7. The 20. The 25. Close to the 30. Downfield for the Cougars. To make the tackle. Tyrone Jones. Boy, Johnny no Johnny Norwood come running down through there, and I'm going to tell you what, if he had a shot at him, he'd have, he'd have torn his head off. There's the Houston scoring drive, 13 plays, 65 yards, used up 4 minutes and 39 seconds. And so far, we've had four field goals in the ballgame. That was a pretty impressive drive by the uh, Cougars. First down, Arkansas from their 30. Derek, or at least the running play here. I was starting to say Derek Thomas, who was one of the return men, not in there as Gary McManus. Made the stop. That was Derek Thomas. I was right the first time. He carried for a gain of two yards to the 32. Well, they keep playing a lot of folks in there. Yeah, that, they've got some depth. Might as well use it. That means when they get to the fourth quarter, that becomes a problem. They've got a lot of their second offensive linemen in right now. Yeah, Darren Worrell is the center. Play fake. Thomas wants to throw. Has a man open. Derek Thomas. Big gainer, fumbles the ball and recovers at the Houston 41. Greg Thomas to Derek Thomas, and he was knocked down by Orsby Crenshaw. A good gainer there. He got 18, he got 23, he got 27 yards. And they got uh, David Bearden in no man's land. He didn't know whether to come up or stay back. You can see him as, as there. He was should have been back in, in zone coverage. That's what made that play go. Got caught up with the play action face, and there's the, there's the bounce of the ball. He fumbles it, drops it. A lot of red jerseys around it, but it bounces right back to him. Back to live action, first down from the Houston 41. 
Eric Comics with the good haul got close to the 35 yard line and Robert Jones knocked him down along with David Bearden. Eric Thomas with the game will give him we'll give him five yards to the 36. Well he's averaging four looks like he came to play tonight. That's three straight plays he's been involved in. Ken Hatfield on the Arkansas sideline. His team trying to go three and one in the conference and six and one overall. They're tied right now six six. This is a second down play. First down yardage picked up by Joe Jensen down to the 30 yard line. He got six yards. Well, they, they keep mixing the play. Now what you see, you see Derek Thomas go one way. Now they come back, giving the ball to halfback with the other back leading through there. That makes it tough for those linebackers. If they're keying that fullback, they take about a half a step one way or the other way that fullback goes that gives good blocking angle for the lead back coming through there or a tackle coming down to block them. This is a first down play. Marshall Foreman back in there at fullback. He's the front man in the wishbone and he's got the football and Houston got him. They were there in a hurry. Also uh, we see the Keith Jenkins a backup nose guard a sophomore. His dad Alfred played in the NFL. Jenkins was the man to hit him first. Good receiver. His no father. game. Watch him cut. Watch it close up the hole here. Look at the penetration and boom. You see Jenkins right up in line. He just shuffled, stepped right up into the hole. Good linebacker play. His dad never caught any passes against your defenses, though, did he? <laughs> oh. This is a second down carry, and Johnson is the man with the ball. Close to another Arkansas first down. Robert Jones had to stop him. Johnson is an exciting sophomore. Good yardage there. Now watch again. That's a counter play. See the fullback go one way, and that's the Cougar that was filling up through there got blocked by the lead back that was going through there. They are really trying to slow down the pursuit of the linebackers by forcing them to kind of stay at home. Now if they stay at home and play that play, then Arkansas will start running some of their outside uh, veer and option stuff. First down, Arkansas. They're now at the Houston 20. Bobby or Robbie Brazina now in the lineup for Houston. He wasn't supposed to play. He's hurting. Eric Thomas to the 16 yard line. Knocked down by Jones again. They're making Thomas work tonight. Looks like they're kind of using he and Foreman alternating them in there and sending some plays in with them. They want to use both of them. Both of them are seniors. And Johnson's a good looking sophomore. Where's number 19 which is the same as Eric Dickerson but that's not his hero. He says Walter Payton is his hero. Either one wouldn't be a bad choice. Not bad at all. I'll let you make the first pick. I'll take the other guy and we'll do OK. Second and six Arkansas from the Houston 16. Ball game tied 6-6. Six, six. Thomas runs the option at the 10 to the five. First and goal. He was tripped up by Orsby Crenshaw. A trainer better take a look at that helmet he's wearing. He's losing it. Now, as he comes down last year, a lot of people are going to say, why did this guy go for the outside man? You see him going out there? His responsibility was the pitch man. Someone else, probably a safety responsibility, was to come up in there and take the quarterback, and he never got there. Thomas having a good night. First and goal from the Houston Five. They'll have one wide receiver. She best out of your picture. Wide left. First and goal from the five. They get inside the five. Jenkins, the nose guard, made the stop on the quarterback who kept the ball himself, Thomas. Sure did. Kind of an unusual call with first down on the five-yard line. Give us one of those backs that uh, got you down there. Might they be setting something up? He only got a yard. No, I, don't th I just don't think they would be setting something up with a quarterback sneak. I don't know what you could set up with a quarterback sneak. I was trying to help the coach out. It wasn't a very good call, <laughs> so. Well, we both you agree. coaches have to stick together. Second and goal from the four. Houston trying to toughen defensively here. This is Johnson. Fumble. And that ball came loose. A scramble for it. Houston got it. Well, they did skip it. Coming away with the football for the Cougars was Darren Warren, a freshman who was redshirted a year ago. He's from Crockett, Texas. We can't see his face, but I know he's got a smile on it. Well, he's got to be extremely happy because he steps up in it. Now, watch the collision. They had two lead backs. Boom, good hit in there by Robert Harper, which causes the fumble. The ball bounces out. Warren, who's really subbing in there for the injured Robbie Brazina, you know he has to be happy. Chance to get a, a start that he normally wouldn't be doing and make it a good play. Look at this now. Harper put the, puts the old bonnet, the old helmet, right on that ball. It bounces out. 
and Houston is alert. Now that e equals up the fumble situation. Houston's got it at their own one yard line. They will be rather conservative, you would think here. Maybe not. I would. This is a dive play off the right side. They look for a little yardage and a little breathing room as the uh, ball carry was stopped by Tony Cherico. Stankus was the man who lugged it. Not much doing there. They want just a little room with which to work, and the pickup was uh, three yards. So it's second and seven. They're now at the Houston four-yard line. The quarterback is Mark Davis. Darrell Landry, the regular quarterback for Houston, is injured. And to the 10-yard line, it's Davis. He had a seam, and he got decent yardage as Charles Washington, the uh, left corner, brought him down. Well, he's done a good job practically every time that he has done that line and kept the ball. They got in trouble when he tried to make the pitch, and, a, and I'm sure that Bill is happy when he doesn't throw that ball around. And they're close to a first down, and they're going to ask the chains to come in from the far side of the field, and we'll see a measurement here. From our vantage point here, I think he might be a little bit short. It's tough to say we're at a slight angle, but we'll let Dixon Holman and his crew sort it out. They need about another half yard. Well, that gives the coaching staff a chance to think about it a little bit and think about to make the call of that play. And I would think if you thought it was conservative on first and ten from your one, I would think this one would be uh, semi-conservative. Okay. Would you disagree? No, of course not. He has to try to make the first down here. But boy, with Jet Brown running down the sidelines and the play action pass, takes a lot of courage to make that call, though, because a lot of Ooh. bad things can happen. One good thing, though, he can make a long completion. You, you send that play down to Bill Yeoman on the sideline, you turn his hair black. It will be third and a yard, actually a half a yard. The ball just shy of the Houston 11 yard line. Third and a yard. Mark Davis will be the center of attention here for the Arkansas defense. Stankus for the first down. Albert Harris on the tackle. Big first down for Houston, uh, Jerry. They backed up the shot of the goalpost. He just turns around, does a reverse pivot, hands the ball to Stankus, and he's just looking for yard and daylight and trying to go off the the edge of one of the blocks, the offensive line, then all you want to do in that situation is fire out, get into your defensive end, and try to just make him move back off the line a little bit. And even if you stand him up straight, the momentum of the runner should get you the first down. It's a 6-6 ball game here with 4.45 and counting left in the first half. First down, Houston. Running the option, it's Davis. To the 14-yard line. Carl Bradford, the defensive end, a junior from Paris, Texas, shut it down. Got a lot of quickness in that uh, Arkansas defensive line. It seemed shuffle down the last scrimmage. He put his hands on the offensive lineman, pushed him down, then came off and made the play. Just, just excellent defensive play by Bradford there. That's exactly where the coaches will try to teach it. To put your hand on that offensive lineman, then release him and just shuffle down the line of scrimmage. He held him to a one-yard gain. It's second and nine for the Cougars. Davis all the way, quarterback rolling right. Oh, a nice tackle in the open field. It's Albert Harris. He's a native of Brown Mills, New Jersey. He must have seen that one before in the uh, playgrounds of New Jersey. Hit the quarterback for a loss. Yeah, well, you see how I like the linebacker show up. And he's shuffling right down the line of scrimmage now. And he comes off of the, off of the corner. The minute Davis gets around the corner, comes right up into his face. No one was open downfield. They wanted to put the ball in the air. We'll see what Houston does here. Third and 12, they're at their own 10-yard line. Jet Brown goes wide left, and now we have a timeout called, and it's taken by the Cougars, and that should be it for timeouts in this half for Houston. That's their third timeout. Well, With the score, 6-6 six, six here, 327 left in the first half. Southwest Conference football continues on Home Sports Entertainment right after this timeout. Team fighting Arkansas tooth and nail here, 6-6. We're in the second quarter, just 327 left in this half. And there's the uh, visit on the far side of the field. Davis, the quarterback, with Phil Yeoman and some of his assistants. Larry, uh, 
Zerline, the offensive coordinator. Bill and him were talking this over. Now, this might have been a little difference of opinion. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Bill would like to have been conservative. <laughs> the younger offensive coordinator might have been wide open with three minutes and 27 seconds to go. Let's see who won this discussion. Third and 12, Houston. They're at their 10-yard line. Rushes on and he's in trouble. He was going to throw it, but that man, Wayne Martin, came in to hit the quarterback and sack him back at the two-yard line or at the one-yard line. This is where they started, and Coach, I'll tell you what, Arkansas is going to get great field position. Yeah, they really are with this, uh, with this blitz and this sack. You see Martin coming there and also Ricky Williams right up into his face, and I'm sure this is just a, what the... Cougar coaching that didn't want to have happen with less than three minutes to go. They didn't want to be backed up like this. Charles Washington awaiting the kick by Simon Rodriguez. He was rough the last time he tried to kick, and he gets it out of there, and this will be returned. Washington at the 42, down to the 35, inside the 30. There was a clip, and flags are flying all over the place. And downfield on the tackle is Bearden, the defensive end for uh, Houston, who's playing on the special team, David Bearden. And Arkansas is going to be hit with a clipping call here, and they'll be pushed further upfield. Well, it really wasn't a very good punt because one of those line drivers that comes back at you just as fast as it gets downfield. But the penalty will help the punt, uh, punt because they're going to get a 15-yarder. Looks like flag day out there. I think every one of the officials saw that one. That was a 40-yard punt and about a 15-yard return, but they're going to move upfield following this uh, penalty against the Razorbacks. Ken Hatfield won't like that, will he? No, I really don't want to see that happen. You take it from the, you know, the 30-yard line all the way back to the 45-yard line. Clipping by the return team during the run by first and ten. Don't think that call came as a big surprise. And here you are, lower side of the screen. You'll see the clip uh, occurring right there. I think there might have been a couple of them <laughs> on there. Multiple choice. Multiple choice. It's four flags, so maybe the official saw three do it. We're back to live action. First down, Arkansas. They're still not in bad shape with the Houston 45, and Thomas wants to put it up and has she best open and hits him at the 25. Slides inside the 20. Boy, he's elusive. Bearden, the defensive end, had to go downfield to knock him down, along with Harper, and the Arkansas fans are excited. Well, they came up with play, with play action pass, and what you don't see is she just comes down inside. He turns the, the uh, cornerback. Johnny uh, Jackson around. He really overplayed the inside. Now when he breaks to the outside, he's he's wide open. A couple missed tackles. It gives him five extra yards. That's what that type of receiver will do. He'll run those routes and run those perfect routes and lull you into thinking he's going one way. When he breaks the other way, he's wide open. He got a 26-yard pickup. First down for Arkansas there at the Houston 19. And the running play here for Foreman. He may go. Touchdown. Marshall Foreman, he broke a couple of tackles. And just like that, Arkansas regains the lead. Well, they ran what they call the inside beer. They were probably double teaming in there, and he just slipped right off of that. And he saw daylight. He turned it on. He showed some speed. Take a look. Now, he comes down right down to the right. Now, there's no hole. Now, watch him break it to the outside. See that little move there? All the double team blocking was in the inside. Now, as he turns it up inside, he spots that goal line, and he had that little extra burst that those good backs have. Trainer for the point after out of the hold of Simpson. And Arkansas has themselves a 13 to 6 lead. Marshall Foreman with a 19 yard touchdown following that uh, short punt by Houston. And even though they were hit with a clipping penalty, Arkansas coming back with a couple of big plays. They went to Shebest for 26 yards on a pass. And then that man, Marshall Foreman, running in from 19 yards. And Ed, you got to credit the Arkansas defense. They made two big defensive plays to back Houston up and made a punt from their end zone to help set that up. Yeah, I would think uh, that probably there's a little second guessing on the Houston sideline on that third down play, getting themselves into trouble. Rather than taking the conservative way, running the ball, maybe picking up two or three yards, giving yourself plenty of room to punt the ball, uh, getting close to the end of the half. Uh, they they wanted to go wide open. And, you know, they just haven't been moving the ball that well all year to get wide open in that situation. Their defense has been playing awful strong. Now they really put the defense in a, in a difficult position. 
Vernell Ramsey and Reggie Rhodes awaiting the kickoff here from Kenny Franklin. He will tee it up. He's one of those barefooted kickers, even though he's got his uh, right foot, his kicking foot, and ankle tape. The fans are what those wide open calls when you give it to them and they don't work. That's the same fan that says, boy, that was a stupid call. <laughs> Here's the kickoff. Ramsey. A yard deep, and he'll bring it out. He gets to the 25-yard line and downfield. Leading the charge for Arkansas was Chris Hunter, a reserve cornerback, a freshman from Arkadelphia, Arkansas. You ever been there? Arkadelphia certainly have. There's a uh, college up in there. Scoring drive, well, it only took two plays. It went 45 yards and it only took 27 seconds. Foreman on a 19-yard run. Passed to Shebus uh, to set the play up, and then Foreman took it in the end zone. Is he a happy uh, youngster there with that shot? First down for Houston from their 25. They trail 13 to 6 now. Mark Davis is the quarterback. And you know that Arkansas defense will be fired up. The quarterback kept it. Kerry Crawford on the tackle. As Davis got close to the 29-yard line. And Arkansas is going to take a timeout. They want, they want Houston to uh, have to kick the football back to them. Well, they scored. When you score in 27 seconds, you feel like you can really score quickly. Yeah, Arkansas has got it going their way right now, and that uh, was a modest gain by the quarterback of, of four yards. Not not real bad, but not real good. Well, you know, they would like to put the uh, nail, another nail in the coffin. On the other hand, Houston thinking right now is uh, let's get into that locker room with just a 13-6 to six ball game because it means one touchdown, we're right back in the game. Houston in danger of having back-to-back -back losing seasons for the first time since the 64 and 65 seasons. They also had a losing record back in 1963, and they were below 500 last year. They're below 500 this year, one and five. Each Saturday on HSE, we'll have live college football for you featuring the service academies. And next week, we'll have Army squaring off against Boston College. Last year, the cadets routed BC 45-14 at home, but the Eagles have been playing better ball this year. And they're sure to be up to the challenge. That's live college football for you next Saturday at 1 o'clock here on Home Sports Entertainment. Life hasn't been the same for BC without Doug Flutie. Life hasn't been the same for Jim McMahon with Doug Flutie. Nor Mike Dicka. Second and six. From the Houston 29 for the Cougars. Davis keeps to the 33 yard line. Again, a four. Crawford again on the stop. And Williams was there as well. Another timeout for Arkansas. That's two. Houston will be faced with a third and two from their own 33. Yeah, I don't think people really realize, Jerry, how young this offensive group is for Houston. Though you, you look all the way across there, even the receiver, Jet Brown, he, he's a sophomore. Two freshman offensive tackles, three sophomores at the guard positions in the center position a freshman tight end you're looking at a junior uh, at the other wide receiver Sloan Hood is only a, a junior Davis only a junior there's one of your old draft choices no we never made that big a mistake oh the one in the the one in the black jersey might have been 12th round choice you, you mentioned the two Houston tackles the young freshmen the, the people they're replacing the people who are injured aren't that long in the tooth either. They have one out, Brian Forsythe, the freshman out with an injury, and Paul Hearn, the other tackle. Uh, only a sophomore, he's injured. Well, they're struggling this year, but they'll be a much better football team a year from now for all the experience these players are getting. Third and two, 33 eye line of Houston, a minute 50 left in the half. Arkansas leads 13 to six. Davis has the first down. Well, that takes care of all those, th all those timeouts now. First down for the Cougars. And Davis kept the ball and crossed the 35 to the 36, a gain of three. And if Arkansas had stopped them that time and used their last time out, they would have forced Houston to punt. But now Houston control the ball and go in there at halftime and, uh, again, the coaching staff try to make some adjustments and get them back ready to go in the uh, third quarter. Mark Davis with Tim Britton out over the ball. First down play here, the clock running. Minute 28 left. Sloan Hood, man, he got hit. Ricky Williams knocked him down for a yard loss. Ricky Williams made the tackle, but that Tony Cherico is always around the football. He's an excellent nose guard. 
And watch to see it again. They're pulling the guard and the tight end on that uh, play that they're trying to run the strong side. But Ricky Williams and the uh, running off tackle, I don't know that we we're going to get that, that accomplished with the quickness of Cherico in that middle. Those nose guards, nose tackles are a tough breed. Not many of them order quiche, do they? No, nope, not many of them. And you're talking about an all-conference working again against the young offensive center. Second down, 11 for Houston. Here comes a deep one for Jeff Brown. It's intercepted by Washington at the 35. He gets away from Brown, and he's got room to run, and blockers returns to the Houston 40, still on his feet, knocked down inside the 35-yard line. Charles Washington, his third interception of the year. Jeff Brown had to come all the way back and make the tackle, and that for Mark Davis is the fifth interception he has thrown this year. Now they really really will put pressure on it. It's a play action pass and you really want to go, go all the way for it but Arkansas just sitting back in his own defense. The three deep people sitting back there waiting for something like that, that uh, to happen. Washington on the overthrow just makes it. Now he picks up some blocks going down the sideline and cuts back the inside. But Cougars do a good job of making a play but now there's 35 seconds. I think Arkansas has one timeout left. That was a 32 yard return. They only have the one timeout left. Thomas wants to go deep. Donnie centers. Almost intercepted in the end zone. Double coverage. Johnny Jackson and Robert Jones. Jones almost picked it off. And Donnie centers the junior out of Longville was the Longview was the intended receiver. Good play by Robert Jones. He just stays back in there and plays center field all the way. She just went, he went down in there, fake like he was going to go to the outside again. But this time, Jackson, oh, that was Donnie Centers rather than Sheba's in there. But anyway, he made the fake like he was going to go to the corner and came back to the middle. But Robert Jones was having none of that in that uh, middle of the three deep zone. 28 seconds left in the half. They're going from the shotgun. Man, he's way back there. Thomas has lots of time. Now he's rushed. He may run. And he may throw. He will throw. Overthrows Tim Horton, a freshman from Conway, Arkansas. His dad, Harold, was a longtime assistant at Arkansas. Now he's the head coach at Central Arkansas. The coverage was provided by Randy Thornton and Gary McGuire. Good job of coverage by the Cougars defense. Stayed with their people when he started scrambling around, and that's one of the things that you always get worried about, defensive secondary coaches and, and coaches in general. When you see a guy scrambling around, you're always worried that one of your linebackers or secondary guy will come off of his coverage and he'll find that guy. We have a good look at number 72. We talked about Freddie Childress. He's a 310 pounder. It's third and 10 Arkansas. 20 seconds left. Quarterback will keep. He will get to the 34. He'll be knocked down by McGuire. And the clock continues to run. They will use their last time out here in a moment and get the field goal unit on. They're down to four seconds. Now they call a timeout. Final timeout and Arkansas will send the field goal unit on. Yeah, again, I believe that was that quarterback uh, draw play. They went back with the idea of trying to get some yardage up the middle and maybe set up the field goal. I'm sure he would like to get a little bit closer than this. Well, let's see. Kendall Trainer is one of two on field goals from 50 yards or better. Well, he kicked a 47-yarder against Houston last year, and the longest of his career, I believe, has been about 55 yards, Jerry. This will be spotted right on the 40. So it will be a 50-yard attempt out of the hold of Jim Simpson, who, by the way, is the reserve quarterback, in case you're thinking fake or something like that. That's what Mr. Trainer has done this evening. Trainer is out of the state of Kansas. He is a sophomore. And now he's backing it up to the 41-yard uh, line. So this will be a 51-yard attempt, and you don't have to worry about any weather conditions here or wind or what have you. We're indoors at the Astrodome. No wind out of the southwest at two miles per hour? No, unless you're looking at the air conditioning vent. When they first did that, did one of the baseball managers think they had the, the vent blowing real hard when they were at bat to end of the uh, batter's box? Must have been Davy Jensen. Here's the spot, and the kick is on its way, and he is going to be good! from 51 yards and that will end the half but Arkansas has upped their lead to 10 points. Houston has committed two turnovers tonight. Arkansas has made them pay for both of them. The Hogs lead it 16 to 6 at halftime. You're watching Southwest Conference football on Home Sports Entertainment. They failed to do it. Arkansas, 201 yards of 
total offense against Houston's 108. Houston having the ball for six better than 16 minutes to Arkansas's 13. The big difference, though, a couple turnovers, a fumble interception by Houston, and Houston's inability to stop the uh, rushing game of Arkansas. Arkansas coming in this game averaging 242 yards. They're well on their on the way to their average. And something that doesn't show up there, they have sacked, Arkansas has sacked the Houston quarterback four times. They have gotten to Thomas. As we look at uh, the uh, Arkansas signal Carter, caller uh, Greg Thomas, they've gotten him once tonight. Yeah, another interesting thing, the entire first half, there was only one punt. Yeah. That, that by Houston, late in the half, backed up in the zone end zone. Though. All right, Arkansas has a 10-point lead here, 16-6, to six, and they're going to get the uh, kickoff to start the third quarter. I think it's imperative Houston stop them on this first possession. Early part of the third quarter could be a big key to whether Houston can come back and make a game out of this or whether as we get into the fourth quarter, uh, remembering now in the fourth quarter so far this year, Jerry, Houston has been outscored 60 to seven. A lot of that because of the, the lack of depth. Boy, there's a guy who's been up and down that line of scrimmage. What a leader and what a football player he is. Pretty and good taste in ladies. He's, uh, I guess he goes with Fred Aker's uh, daughter up there at University of Texas. Yeah, I understand he does. And I find out that uh, Texas beat SMU today in an upset, 27-24 in a last-second field goal. That's Ken Hatfield, the Arkansas coach. He's got to feel pretty good the way things went in the first half of play, and he's looking to add to his national ranking. They came in 13th-ranked team in the country. Well, and he also has to realize that he needs to win this ball game tonight. Of course, there's Bill Yeoman. He's had his share of wins and knows what it takes to win. Struggling a little bit this year. They're really hurt early in the season with a lot of losses. Now they're struggling with some injuries, playing a lot of young people. But he's been it before, and he'll hang in there. They'll beat a couple people before the season's over. Houston is 0-3 in the conference and 1-5 overall. Arkansas, 2-1 in the conference with a 5-1 overall record. That is Marshall Foreman. He scored the touchdown on a 19-yard run in the second quarter. That has helped Arkansas into their 10-point lead at 16-6. And Chip Brondike, who has accounted for the Houston scoring with a couple of field goals, will boot it to start the second half. It's taken by Foreman around the 5. Out across the 20. Across the 30. And Arkansas has the football. And the tackle was made by Eldridge Sellers, the reserve defensive back on this Houston team. Arkansas starts at their own 35, a 28-yard return. Or yeah. check that, it's out to the 32-yard line. Yeah, Arkansas really needs to win this because if, if you're realistic about it, Jerry, they're about the only team that might have a chance in this conference championship. Baylor already has two losses. Texas, already had, Texas Tech has already has uh, two losses. Arkansas sitting there with two and one, two losses, and I believe you're out of the conference race. Yeah, it'd be tough to overcome that. First down from the Arkansas 32. Thomas keeps and gets out across the 35 near the 37 in the free safety. Robert Jones brought him down. That Thomas is a good one. He's got to come out of the ball game. He jams something. He's hurting, and he's out of the ball game. Greg Thomas, the starting quarterback from Arkansas, shaken up on the first play of the second half, and they may have to take a timeout. As now uh, John Bland, their backup quarterback, a sophomore from Knoxville, Tennessee, finally comes out on the field. Evidently, he must be first. Let's see if we can see where he gets hit as he comes over the sideline. There's a good tackle in there by Robert Jones. Rolls over on him. No, we can't see what happens. Second and five from the 37. And the running play here to Foreman. As he gains close to the 40-yard line as they continue to work on Thomas. On the near sideline, Harper and Montgomery on the tackle for Houston. The gain is uh, just shy of the 40. We'll give him uh, three yards. Well, he's alternating those plays between uh, Chebis and, and centers. Chebis in there right now. And Third and two. Third and two from the 40. And Foreman with a first down carry across the 45 to the 47. Jones was there again. And he had help from Crenshaw, the left corner, but that's an Arkansas first down. Well, they're just running that double team in there. They're taking that right guard and, and right tackle, Childress and Beckett. They're just right there. There's a shot, Thomas. He's walking around on the sideline now, so apparently the looks like he might want to get back in the ball game. But they're double teaming, and Foreman is just doing an excellent job of breaking off to the outside of that double team block. And the, the defensive lineman, the linebacker, just has to close that down. John Bland, a 5'10 sophomore quarterback. He was a wishbone quarterback in high school. And nice fake on his part. He heads for the far sideline, out of bounds in Houston territory, right around the 48-yard line. Glenn Montgomery and Randy Thornton, a couple of 
Houston Cougars ran them out over by their bench. Well, Bland must have good speed. You see him fake the play to one side, coming out to the other side, looking for the receiver, and no one open. Now he's going to turn it up and pick up about five yards. And he's averaging uh, four-point yards to carry, which is even better than Thomas. Thomas is only averaging 3.0. A new running back in there for Arkansas, number 44, a freshman out of Denison, Arkansas, Aaron Jackson, as we look at John Bland. And the running play here is Joe Johnson carries down to the 42-yard line. Jackson, by the way, is from Denison, Texas, and not Arkansas. Tackled here, uh, Johnson, by Thornton and Jones. They come into Texas to get those back, huh? Boy, they do, don't they? Well, again, right now, Houston's defense has to make a big play. If Arkansas can take this second-half kickoff, drive it down the field using the running game, then it will be a long fourth quarter for the defensive front four and those linebackers. First down for Arkansas. They're at the Houston 41-yard line. They lead 16-6. to This is the first possession of the second half. And the inside handoff gets them some yardage as Harper and Hoskins made the tackle on the ball carrier and that is Marshall Foreman he's been a workhorse he got down uh, to the 38 a three-yard pickup looked like the play was stopped at the line of scrimmage and all of a sudden it's a three-yard game Thomas is throwing on the sideline he's checking out a hand he may have jammed a thumb on that uh, play where he was injured he's throwing down behind the Arkansas bench Derek Thomas is in the ball game now a reserve running back second and seven from the Houston 38 play fake by Bland he'll keep it inside the 30 inside the 20 first down Arkansas David Bearden along with Gary McManus knocked down John Bland and we mentioned that he ran a wishbone offense in high school and he looks comfortable out I'm there doesn't you, he I'm gonna tell you one thing he shows some speed now see the fake now as he comes out he's looking downfield watch when he turns it on up through here he decides to run right about now he really accelerates and puts a good burst on. Uh, he had them spread out because they were covering the receivers, but this young man for a sophomore is, looks like he can run this attack. His dad played at Mississippi State and in the NFL. That was a 22-yard pickup. This is Joe Johnson. First down carry inside the 15-yard line. He goes McGuire and Jones there. Johnson with the pickup. He got down close to the 12-yard line. We'll give him, we'll give him four yards to the 12. Well, they're chewing up yardage, uh, and they're also chewing up the clock. It's going to make it awful difficult for Houston to get back in this ball game if they can control the clock this way. 16 to six, Arkansas leading, and they're threatening to get more. Second and six, facing the Razorbacks. Running play here. Inside the five-yard line, Derek Thomas, Jerry Maguire brought him down. It's first and goal. And just about the time the Cougars think that Foreman might be slowing down, they're just going straight ahead. Double teaming, they double teamed the tackle in there, and he broke it off to the inside. Linebacker moving, he cuts behind him, and good running by Thomas and Foreman. Two fine-looking fullbacks. It will be first and goal from the three. They'll come out with a double tight end set. Full house backfield in the wishbone. First and goal from the three. Joe Johnson bouncing, fighting, touchdown. What an effort. That kid would not be denied. Joe Johnson would not go down, and Arkansas has upped their lead as Derek Hoskins couldn't bring him down. Well, you can take a look at what a defensive tackle goes through. Gary McManus uh, sitting in that defensive tackle position. They're driving at him. And see the, see the two lead backs go right straight in ahead of uh, Johnson? Uh, both the fullback and the right halfback was leading that play in the hold. That defensive tackle not only has to uh, fool around with the offensive tackle, but he has two backs leading through the play. The point after by Kendall Trainer is good. We've got 10-42 left in the third quarter. Arkansas now leading their biggest lead of the night, 23-6 over the Houston Cougars. We'll return to the Astrodome in Houston right after this break from your local stations. You're watching Southwest Conference Football on Home Sports Entertainment. Marching down for a score. Joe Jensen going from three yards out into the end zone as we look at the kicker, Kenny Franklin. 
booting it away to either Vernell Ramsey or Reggie Rhodes. Ramsey is to the left of your picture a moment ago. And the kickoff will go into the end zone for a touchback. Good placement there by Franklin. All right, when you're going well, that's what happens to you. If you're going bad, that ball bounces and takes a little side kick and goes out of bounds, and they got to move it back and kick five yards deeper. So Houston looking to regroup here. This will be their first possession of the second half. Well, there's a scoring drive. Ten plays, 68 yards. Used four minutes and 18 seconds. And, of course, Johnson made a great three-yard run. That's one of the better three-yard runs you're going to see in a long time. Extremely important that the Houston offense, Jerry, move the ball or use up some clock and give the defense a little bit of rest right now. And Mark Davis is the quarterback. He's been in there all the way. Sloan Hood and John Stankus are the running backs, and this is Hood. He got to the 21, maybe the 22, before David Shell, a defensive tackle out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, brought him back. Two-yard pickup. That was really an intelligent guy. He's majoring in computer science. Right now, the Arkansas defensive front four looks like they're getting stronger and stronger as this ball game is going along. They have a lot of confidence. They know they're playing against some young, uh, inexperienced offensive linemen. It's really beginning to show. Second and eight for Houston. This is Davis across the 25 yard line and Ricky Williams brought him down. He had help from Albert Harris. The two inside linebackers there for the Razorbacks and Houston has a man shaken up and that's Stankus the fullback. There you see him fake, fake the play action. Now he's gonna, he wants to put the ball in the air downfield but again no one is open and he just sees daylight goes up through there and picks up what he can pick up on the play. Houston receivers are not getting open. Arkansas defensive backs, Washington and Brothers, doing a good job of one-on-one -on -one play against them. There goes Stankus out of the ball game at number 32, Matt Pearson, a senior, who started his college career at Oklahoma, transferred to Houston. Matt Pearson is in there at a running back position. Now the play brought in by Dwayne LeBlanc, wide receiver out of Beaumont. Third and three facing the Cougars here. They desperately need a first down. And Davis will be close. Oh, he got he got that ball across the across the line. If they don't give him a bad spot, he made that first down. Carl Bradford on the tackle. You say if they don't give him a bad spot. Yeah, they do that sometimes. Once in a while. He can go down. He knows all he has to do is get the line. I watch him dive forward, lurch the ball forward later, just right across that line, and there's a first down. You can see that he's thinking and knew exactly what he needed to make that first down. Pearson and Hood are the running backs. First down for Houston from their 30. They trail 23 to 6. Davis looking over the defense. This is Sloan Hood. Hood for four to the 34-yard line. Albert Harris on the tackle. One of the lead blockers was William Gant, the right guard, whose uncle Reuben Gant used to play for Buffalo. You remember him? Oh, well, pretty good defensive lineman. Three yard pickup on the Lone Hood carrying for four. It's second and six coming up for the Cougars as they try to find something to hang their hats on. Hood has had a modest night running the football, but that happens against Arkansas. They're not bad defensively. They're very good defensively. And they're really tough to throw the ball against. Houston may have to do that before the night's over. They're going to do it here. And he overthrows LeBlanc. And on the coverage for Arkansas, Richard Brothers, the right corner, who's coming off shoulder surgery. Talking about that Arkansas defense, Jerry. They played six games, and they've given up zero points, 14 points, 11 points, 17, 17, and 14. They're not giving up many points on that scoreboard. Third and six. Facing Houston from their 34, as Arkansas has only given up two field goals here tonight. Davis with a play fake. This is the tight end, and he's knocked down before he can get the first down. Steve Atwater, the safety out of St. Louis, Missouri, knocked down Edward Thomas, the freshman tight end from New Orleans, about a yard short of the first down, and Houston's going to have to kick it away. And there's one of those plays. If things are going well, that kid keeps his balance for another yard and a half and gets the first down. <laughs> That's right. Charles Washington awaiting this kick from uh, Simon Rodriguez. 
Rodriguez, averaging 37 yards per kick, hangs out a good one. Washington at the 13, looking for somewhere to go and can't find any place to go. He's knocked down at the 18-yard line by Michael Shepard, a backup defensive tackle, a freshman from Monroe, Louisiana. That was a 49-yard punt and a five-yard return. Yeah, that was a legitimate 49-yard punt because he had good hang time. He had it up in the, in the air. So many times you see those 50 and longer punts that or that way because the ball hits the ground and rolls a lot. But that was legitimate, good hang time. Uh, now, now we got to look like there's a penalty, Jerry, against uh, the Cougars. Well, our referee tonight is Dixon Holman. And they'll have to deal with the penalty here as the officials talk it over. We see that uh, John Bland will remain a quarterback for Arkansas. And Greg Thomas, their starter, was shaken up earlier. The penalty against Houston will bring the ball out to the 34-yard line. Personal foul against Houston during the run back. First down, 10. So that will drive Bill Yeoman a little bit uh, more to the uh, point of being irate on the sideline. That takes that 49-yard punt, turns it into a 34-yard punt. 7.47. Left in the third quarter, Arkansas up 23 to 6. Here they come, first and 10. From their 34 yard line, Bland wants to throw and he wants a lot. And he's going to go for Shebets. And he overthrows him through double coverage from Crenshaw and Jones. And Shebets threw a crowd downfield. Nick Bland hung it up there pretty good. Yeah, he really did. But good job by Crenshaw staying back in his own coverage. Robert Jones came a long way to come across there. Now watch him throw off that front foot. Good quarterback throws off that front foot, gets it up in the air. He just overthrows him. Probably just as well that he did because the coverage that they had might have had a, uh, Jones may have had a chance for the interception. Downey Spinners will bring the play in from the Arkansas bench and Ken Hatfield as uh, Shebes gets a break. Centers number one, a wide receiver wide left. They have a wide receiver wide right. Do they ever throw passes back to back? No draw. Quarterback draw and Bland. To the 38-yard line, a four-yard pickup. Robert Harper from Kansas City, Missouri, had a big game against Arkansas back in 1984. 16 tackles, a fumble recovery, an interception, and a sack. Probably helped clean out the stadium that night as well. And maybe sold some popcorn and tickets. Yeah, he was in on that tackle. Did a good job. Did a good job of diagnosing, being alert to fact. And apparently Arkansas feels that quarterback draw will be a good play against Houston. You usually feel that way if you think a team is playing a lot of man-for-man -man coverage, but Houston is playing more zone tonight than they have in the past. They put their tight end, Theo Young, wide left, and a running play here for Derek Thomas as he crosses the 40 to the 41, three-yard gain. He's knocked down by Derek Hoskins. That'll leave them in a situation where they're going to have to punt for the first time. That's the appearance uh, here, and here comes Greg Horn, their punter, out of Russellville, Louisiana, excuse me, Russellville, Arkansas, he leads the nation in punting with a 49-yard average. Yeah, I've been anxious to take a look at him. Decent first size, time. six foot, 190, first time tonight. Back awaiting the kick, two men for the Houston Cougars, Orsby Crenshaw and Robert Jones. Here's Horn's kick, and it's a beauty. Crenshaw wants a fair catch and has it at the 13-yard line. Greg Horn hung out a dandy. He's just another in a line, a long line of good kickers from Arkansas. That punt covered 46 yards. Southwest Conference football continues on Home Sports Entertainment right after this timeout. Leg extension that right foot. Watch him come and look where he had that foot. Full extension, almost up and almost touched his helmet when he punted the ball. And he backs Houston up to their 14-yard line. It's a first down. They trail 23 to 6, and Davis wants to throw. Fires low, and it is caught. That's Jeff Brown on the far side of the field. Richard Brothers on the coverage, the right corner. That ball was thrown low. There was no way to pick it off. The completion out to the 28-yard line, a 14-yard pickup, and a Houston first down. Well, watch, watch Jeff Brown, though. Get underneath this ball. You have to go down. Watch him bend his knees, go down low. Catch the ball in his hand. That's an excellent uh, catcher by that sophomore now. A lot of guys will just bend at the waist. He lowered those uh, knees and got down underneath the ball. First down, Houston from their 27. Three wide receivers as they go slot right this time. Davis 
Keeps the ball after faking it to Hood and has another first down across the 40-yard line. Tackled by David Dudley. As Mark Davis with a nice fake to Hood. Kept it himself and got good yardage for another first down. He'll come down the line, look and read, sees the opening, turns up through there. Just nothing but his own athletic ability made that play. 14-yard pickup. They've moved it out to their own 41-yard line. If you look in on the Houston huddle, Mark Davis, he's been busy with the ball tonight, but hasn't picked up a lot of yardage. He picked up 14 yards on that last carry. First down, Houston. Sloan Hood to the 44-yard line for three. And at the bottom for Arkansas is Wayne Martin, along with David Shell, the two defensive tackles pinched in to get him. It will be second down facing the Cougars as they trail here 23 to 6. And they need to find something to do and get into that end zone as we looked at some of the Arkansas cheerleaders. Second and seven. Davis. Pop pass for the tight end. It's deflected to the wide receiver, Mike Rhodes, and he caught it out to the 50 yard line. So Houston getting a little luck going their way that time. The gain is six to the 50 yard line. The old tip drill. He throws it for Thomas. Thomas can't handle it. Bounces off his hands into, uh, into the other receiver's hands. Uh, Mike Rhodes. Don't see that happen the, for you the, the right way very often. So now they need a yard, about a yard and a half for a first down. Third and a yard from the 50 yard line facing Houston. They're trying to retain the football. Running play here for Matt Pearson, and he's going to be close. Pearson playing for John Stankus, who was injured earlier, was stopped by Ricky Williams, and it's going to be close, and they may have to measure. Well, even if they don't make this, I think the, uh, the Cougars almost are forced to go for it. Yeah, this is a situation where you have to go uh, for the first down. He looks to be short from here, but they're going to bring in the chains. Six inches. Seven, maybe. Maybe even eight. Seven and a half, at least. Chains are brought in from the far side of the field. Maybe 10 inches. All we know is it's fourth down. And they've got to go, don't they? No, they're going to kick it. And the crowd doesn't like it. Simon Rodriguez, the punter, comes on. And dropping back is Charles Washington awaiting the kick. Well, well this is interesting. If ever the guy they can do out of punt formation and have it lined up, this might be the time to do it. Houston sends a man on late. And they're going to kick it away. Rodriguez. Washington calling for the fair catch at the 10-yard line. And uh, that punt covered 40 yards. And Arkansas takes over at their own 10. Now, uh, one of the Arkansas players, Ricky Williams, who has been outstanding, their uh, inside linebacker, has helped off the field as he was shaken up on the play. And Arkansas gets the ball back, and they're backed up to their 10-yard line. Now Houston's got to be thinking of finding a way to make Arkansas turn it over. Well, they really have to stop Arkansas down here and, and get good field position because you know, they're behind 23-6. to six, and There's only four minutes to go in the third quarter, so you have to look up at that scoreboard realizing that you... Need 17 points, and this means you need more than two scores. John Bland, the quarterback, playing for the injured Greg Thomas. This kid's a sophomore out of Knoxville, Tennessee. First down of his own 10-yard line. Bland keeping. He got a couple of yards, and Robert Harper brought him down. Harper was nicked earlier, but he's okay now. Now, that was a good play by both Harper and Jones. You see, as he comes down line, 22 is going to take the outside people, but Harper and Jones coming from the inside are responsible for the quarterback. One of them responsible if he comes back inside, the other if he comes back outside. Good job of defense in that option. Houston has Anthony Young in there now at the strong safety position. And he was responsible for the pitch man on that play as he went to the outside. Second and eight, Arkansas. This is Foreman. To the 15-yard line. Three-yard gain, and Gary McManus brought him down. Boy, he's got quick feet when he gets in that hole. Now he stepped up to the hole. It wasn't quite there, and he took a little side step to his left and then accelerated. Uh, watch him as you come down. Watch him take this quick step here, right there. Come back to his left, fall forward, 
and get himself a couple extra yards. Really got quick feet in the hole. Glides a little bit, doesn't he? Yeah. All right, Arkansas needs five if they're going to keep the football. Third and five facing them from their 15-yard line. They lead in the ball game, 23 to 6, just under three minutes left in the third quarter. And Bland still has the football, and he does not have the first down as Johnny Jackson and Kevin Allen brought him down. Well, I'm really glad to help him. I'm anxious to see this Greg Horn punt the ball again. He's lead, as you said, Jerry, he's lead the, the entire nation. Of course, leading the Southwest Conference. And Harry's got a chance to unload everything he has into this punt. And Houston drops two men back as we look at Horn. H-O-R-N-E, Greg Horn. He's out of Russellville, Arkansas. Watch his leg extension. The snap will come from Richie Miller. And there you put the jinx on him. But he gets a good bounce. Jones picks up the bounce and returns it across the 50 to the Arkansas 47. Houston will have good field position. And making the tackle for the Razorbacks and their kick coverage team. And that one of their reserve linebackers by the name of Kerry Owens. Well, that was a great example, Jerry, what we just talked about, the difference in a good punt and a bad punt. The very first punt we looked at, he had super leg extension with that right leg. That one, he almost snapped his leg and, uh, and stopped it about at waist level. Our next telecast of Southwest Conference football on HSC. Every Saturday, you'll see a same-day delay telecast. Next game coming next Saturday night, November 1st. Here in the Dome, it's TCU against Houston at 10.30 on HSE. First down for Houston. Davis throwing, complete for LeBlanc, and then he drops the ball. Is it a fumble? The officials say yes. And it's recovered by Richard Brothers, and the Cougars are putting up a beef about it. Now the officials may talk it over, Ed. Yeah, that one official came in from this side. I think he wanted to say an incomplete pass. Now you're going to see whether this is a strong official or not. Brothers made the hit, and Martin recovered it, and Dixon Holman saying it's incomplete. We'll look again. But it comes down the line. Now he delivers the ball into his hands right there. And, well, we can't see whether he had full possession of the ball or not, but it was out of his hands as he went down. And number nine, Brothers, here's Richard another, Brothers. Here's another look at it. See, he, he never had his feet down on the ground. Never had two feet back down on the ground. That's usually what they'll look at to see if he has both feet down. Second and ten for Houston as Brothers made that hit to strip LeBlanc of the ball. Play fake Davis. He wants to throw. Will run. He's in trouble. He'll get a yard out of it to the 47. And then he was crunched. Cherico was there. Tony Cherico, the all-conference nose guard, along with Michael Shepard, a defensive tackle. He's always there, isn't he, Cherico? Yeah. <laughs> radar in his head for the football. He's got a nose for the football, and he's aggressive. Those are two pretty good ingredients to start a football player with. Third and nine for the Cougars. They say eight, actually it's nine. Davis pumps. Now he's going for LeBlanc, and he couldn't make the one-headed catch. He was covered. First of all, by Richard Brothers, but further upfield, David Dudley had him. And the ball was overthrown, and LeBlanc couldn't catch up with it. It fell incomplete, and Houston has a chance to back up the Hogs again. But as Rodriguez, the punter, comes on, sooner or later, Houston's going to have to do a little more scoring. Well, no question. You look up at the, in the scoreboard and realize that here they are late in the third quarter, the only minute to go, and they've only have 165 yards of offense. Had the ball three times this half, Jerry, and uh, punted all three times. Simon Rodriguez, Charles Washington watching it, call for the fair catch. He let it bounce, and Houston will down it inside the five, down around the one, and downfield making the uh, play for the Houston Cougars was Johnny Norwood, a transfer from Alabama. He is a reserve defensive back. He did a good job right here. Yeah, he really did a good job of keeping himself from going to the end zone. That's, that's not the hard, easiest thing in the world to keep those feet and keep your balance there. Because if you take that extra half step and fall in there, the ball goes out to 20. Good job by Norwood. That's a 45-yard punt. Arkansas takes over at their one-yard line. And John Bland, again, is the Arkansas quarterback. We're looking on the sideline to see if we can find Greg Thomas, who was shaking up earlier. Well, I think also they want to give this uh, reserve quarterback a chance to play when you're sitting with a 23-6 lead and your defense is dominating like this. Great chance to give him experience for later on. Thomas is standing right next to the coach. 
Shen Hatfield. And here's a running play getting short yardage as Bland kept himself for quarterback sneak, just looking for a little breathing room down there. There's Thomas. Tackle on the last play made by Darren Warren. A gain of two out to the three-yard line, and we watch the seconds tick away here in the third quarter as Marshall Foreman sprints onto the field late, and Derek Thomas comes out of there. Second down for Arkansas, second and eight. Foreman gets the football and gets close to the five-yard line. And he was stopped by Robert Harper, and that should be the final play of the third quarter. And it is. At the end of the third quarter, Arkansas leads Houston 23 to 6. You're watching Southwest Conference football on Home Sports Entertainment. The Arkansas cheerleaders happy that their team is doing okay. They lead 23 to 6 as we head for the fourth quarter. And Arkansas will be faced with a third and seven from their own four-yard line. I've had days when I felt like that. Well, it was a very exciting third quarter, Jerry. Five punts. Five punts, huh? That's well, what it was. If you like kicking, it was a heck of a quarter, right? Well, I was anxious to see Horn punt the ball, and I'd like to see him stop here again just to see him punt the ball. There's some of the uh, Houston supporters. Third and seven as we start the fourth quarter. Arkansas at their four-yard line, leading 23 to six. Land on a quarterback keeper and a quarterback draw here. Got back to the uh, five-yard line, maybe the sixth. Jenkins brought him down along with Warren. And Houston, again, should get good field position as they force Arkansas to punt. And yeah, let's give us this chance again to take a look at this young man that people are talking about might be a draft choice in the pros this year. He's had one good one and one bad one. Orsby Crenshaw along with the defensive back Robert Jones. Both of these guys are defensive backs awaiting the kick from this man, Greg Horn. He's standing deep in his end zone. He'll need a good snap, but he gets it. Penetration, but he got it out of there, and I'll tell you what, he got a beauty. It's Crenshaw at the 45. Looking for somewhere to go. And Arkansas was all over him, and downfield was Ken Massa. A reserve running back to make the tackle on the special teams for Arkansas, but Houston will take over at their own 44-yard line. That was a 49-yard punt and a here's, good one. Here's a look at the kick, Jerry. Let's see him again. And again, there's that good leg extension that time. Boy, he had great height. He allowed the lineman to get down there and cover that punt. This young man is, does have a good future. You can see why he's leading the NC2A in, uh, in punting. What's Houston's approach now? They've got 14 minutes, and they trail 23 to 6. They need some points. Yeah, they really do, but, you know, Jerry, their passing attack has it had problems with it, so I think they've got to kind of stick to what, what they do best, try to maybe get a long run in there or a quick pass or a slant pass or something will break for them. And if they rely strictly on the passing game, they'll, they'll probably be in trouble. They're playing without Gerald Landry, their regular starter at quarterback, who's got a thigh injury. This is a first down call, and Davis is hit for a loss. They tried to run the option, the rear option, and it loses yardage back to the 42-yard line as Wayne Martin. He's played a whale of a game defensively for Arkansas. He was in the middle of it again, a loss of a yard back to the 43. Well, you can see where that Arkansas defense has given up only 271 yards average per game. They've given 139 yards rushing, 132 passing. Uh, they've got an excellent defensive uh, front four. Linebackers are quick, and the secondary has speed. Second and 11, facing the Houston Cougars. Davis being chased. He unloads, and it is caught on the near side of the field. Jeff Brown with another scintillating catch as he went low for that ball. Nathaniel White on the coverage. I'm going to tell you what, this Jet Brown, now watch again. This is another great uh, sideline catch here. This ball is thrown low and outside. Watch him dive and concentrate and catch the ball. You don't find many receivers that will make those kind of catches. Young man out of Victoria. He got 12 yards and a first down. Arkansas with victories this year over Mississippi, Tulsa, New Mexico State, TCU, and Texas. They've lost to Texas Tech, and they're leading Houston here. But a first down for the Cougars at the Arkansas 45. Motion by the uh, man Thomas in a running play here. Gets inside the 45. 
as Sloan Hood carried and Ricky Williams who was shaken up earlier brought him down after a gain. Well let's give him uh, four yards down to the 41. You know, Jerry that Jet Brown has made two just super catches. Anyone can make the easy catch but that guy that can lay out the two catches he's made in this ball game have just been tremendous effort. A lot of concentration on the ball. Second and six for Houston. They're in Arkansas territory again motion by Thomas. And a running play for Sloan Hood who has a first down down to the 25 yard line. A 16 yard pickup and Steve Atwater brought him down. They seem to go right down the line hand off to Sloan. Sloan makes inside and good blocking by the offensive line. Now once he gets in the open. He takes it on down in there. Terry Moser got him a take a look at Cherico here. here now. Here Cherico stands him up, stands him up, but he did his job. That wasn't his gap responsibility. The linebacker never got in there. Back to live action. First down of the Arkansas 25. Here's a pop pass for Thomas, the man who's been in motion, and he gets it down to the 17-yard line. And Atwater again on the tackle. That was an eight-yard pickup. Yeah, right now that's what the Cougar offensive philosophy has to be: mix them up, short passes, quick passes. And try to keep that running game going. Because that's strong enough. There's your third quarter stats. Total yards, 288. But again, the big difference in rushing yards. Arkansas with 223. They're averaging for the year is, I think, 242. So that's, that's the big key difference right there. Houston needs two yards here. This is the second down play about to unfold in the uh, running play here. And the ball came loose as Vernell Ramsey carried for the first time. The ball came loose. Arkansas says they've got it. Houston feels they retain possession. And apparently Arkansas did not get the ball. Houston got it back. Coming away with it at the bottom. Terry Moser, number 61, the uh, left guard. And uh, out of Laporte, and they're going to have to measure again. Here's a look, see if we can see the fumble in there. It comes out right away. Came out early. He never, he never really had the ball uh, wrapped away. Now they're going to measure for the first down. That is a first down for the Cougars. So again, uh, Lady Luck wearing the Houston colors. It's first down for Houston. They're at the Arkansas 15. Houston this year, their only win came over Oklahoma State. Quite an upset there. They have lost to Arizona, Tulsa, Baylor, Texas A&M, and SMU. And they're trailing Arkansas here 23 to 6 in the fourth quarter. First down from the Arkansas 15. Lone Hood didn't get much as he tried the left side of the Arkansas defense and David Shell stopped him. Well, that's what experienced uh, defensive linemen and linebackers will, will do for you. Shallow Jr., who's played a lot of football, when they've been taking Thomas across there in motion the first couple of times, he loosened up a little bit, worrying about that block, and Sloan Hood made the big run inside. That time, same identical play, but Shell said, no, no. I know what you ran the last time, so I'm going to stay right at home. Second down and nine for Houston. They're at the Arkansas 14-yard line. Rhodes is in motion across your screen. Davis to the end zone. Touchdown! Jack Brown. He caught two down low. He made a leaping catch at the goal line as he beat Richard Brothers for the first Houston touchdown of the night. College of pro, Jerry. This young man has made three catches that you won't see anybody make any better than he's made this evening. That touchdown pass now, the ball was high. There was a coverage man around him. He went up, he extended himself, caught the ball, knew he might get hit in that situation. Take a look at it now. Here comes Davis out. Now watch how high he goes up. Watch those hands up over his head. Looks and concentrates all the way. Steps in the end zone. He's not a real big kid. He's only 5'10". Now Brown Dyke for the point after. And he has it. And it's a 10 point difference. Arkansas leading Houston 23 to 13. We've got 10 21 left here in the fourth quarter. And we'll return to the Astrodome in Houston right after this break from your local stations. You're watching Southwest Conference football on home sports entertainment. Oh, we've got ourselves a 10 point difference in this one. There's a look at the touchdown pass. Now, what? Jet Brown come down. Break to the outside. Now uh, you can see defensive uh, cornerback brothers in pretty good shape. And he concentrates and stays right with that ball all the way. 
Young man's an excellent young receiver. You know, this guy will do a little bit for the Cougars morale also, Jerry. They, in the fourth quarter so far this year, they have been outscored 60 to 7. For them to score early in the fourth quarter, and of course Arkansas had plenty of points on the board in the fourth quarter, they're well aware of the fact that they hadn't been playing well in the latter part of the game. That's Donnie Centers awaiting the kick, the kick by Chip Browndyke. And he boots it. And Centers will return it from the three. The 10, 20, 30, to the 40. Oh, an excellent return, and he was hit around the head, and there go the flags. And somebody clubbed him around the head, or so it appeared from here. And for Houston over there, they had a couple of guys on the kick coverage team. We'll yeah. take a look. Yes, it might be a face mask. Yeah, probably call it a face mask. That was uh, Sellers, Eldridge Sellers. We'll get an explanation here. Five-yard face mask penalty against Houston on the run back. Good call, Coach Miles. Arkansas has the ball at their 49, and that's not what Bill Yeoman wanted to see. Oh. Look at that shot of that catch done. A scoring drive, eight plays, 56 yards, three minutes and 49 seconds. But what a great play by Jet Brown. What a name for a receiver. His real first name is Everett. And the running play here for Derek Thomas gets him modest yardage as Derek Huskin brings him down. Thomas held to a short gain. And uh, Houston, if they had momentum following the touchdown, and they had to have momentum, but that big return and then the penalty just turned it right around or negated some of that momentum. Right. They almost need to have something good happen to them, a fumble or something of that nature, maybe a long, a long penalty. Been a pretty well penalty-free game, though. Second and seven. They're in Houston territory. This is Van Dyke, and he loses a yard. Derek Hoskins on the tackle. Well, it's just amazing what a touchdown will do for your defensive football team. You know, they were struggling, 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 but all of a sudden, the offense puts points on the board. Defense said, hey, if we get out there and get that ball back, maybe they can do something. There are only three penalties in the game through the three, through the three quarters. That was the fourth penalty of the ball game. Not bad. Here comes Tim Horton in from the Arkansas bench with a play. She best also coming in. She best had the play. Maybe the NFL officials could learn from these guys that you can play football oh, no. while throwing flags. Now you sound like an ex-coach. <laughs> Five defensive backs in for Houston. This is a third down situation. And Bland wants to go deep for Horton, the freshman. And it's incomplete. Double coverage. Double coverage. Percy Hines and Robbie Wise were there. Hines is a transfer from Oklahoma. Oh, and they both are back there. They try to go down and out and then up, and then he had plenty of time to throw the ball, but Hines and Wise both are on top of the play. Excellent defensive play there by both of them. 37 is Wise, and Hines is 29, and we'll look at Greg Horn, the Arkansas kicker again, and he's had a good night booting it. Now, let's see if he can uh, think about putting one out inside the 20, whether he thinks that way. That's Orsby Crenshaw. The deepest of two men for Houston, and they're coming after the kicker, and they don't get it, and he hangs it up there. And the Cougars are going to let it bounce, and it takes a bounce at the five, and they'll down it at the one. He can do it all, Jerry. You're going to see a lot more. His football career is not finished. Bubba Barrow is that man right there to down it. Bubba Barrow, that was a 47-yard punt. But the great thing about it, he had it up there so high that Barrow could get down there and down the ball. We'll see what Arkansas has left on their schedule. They're home next week against Rice, and then they've got a key game at Baylor, and another big one against A&M on the 15th, and they'll end up at SMU. Well, you know, if they could beat Rice next week and then win those next two, they could maybe find themselves in the Cotton Bowl. It'll be interesting. They come in with a two-and-one conference record. Baylor won their game today. A&M was a winner today. SMU was upset by Texas. Houston at their own one with a first down. This is what you call being between a rock and a hard place as Matt Pearson carries for the couple, Bradford and Williams on the stop. Well, you, st you know, you still can't panic. There's plenty of time to go in this ball game. Eight and a half minutes to go. A quick strike somehow or other. Uh, you're only 10 points behind. Houston. 
They last won a homecoming game back in 1980 when they beat Arkansas 24 to 17. And they're trailing in this homecoming game 23-13. Second down play here as Thomas goes in motion. Fake pass, and now they throw it. It's complete. And that's the first down out across the 15-yard line as Rhodes caught it. And Richard Brothers brought down Mike Rhodes, a Houston native, a sophomore who caught three passes in the game against Arkansas last year. Rhodes may have caught that in uh, self-defense. Mark Davis, that's probably his best pass that he's thrown. Watch him come out of here now. Now watch he plants. When he plants, he delivers that ball. He drills it right into Rhodes' hand, right, in, right at those numbers. Back to live action we come. First down, Houston. Clock shows less than eight minutes left in this one. Mark Davis, the Houston quarterback, pitches. And here comes Sloan Hood to the 21, the 22. Charles Washington, the cornerback number four, did a good job to bring him down. He really did hit him out in the open field. And now you got a penalty out there. Looks like it's going to be holding penalty. Team come down now. Now Sloan Hood comes inside and works it back to the outside, but. This play is going to all be brought back because of the holding penalty. They're talking it over with the Arkansas players right now. Good camera work once again by our HSE crew. And we're being guided tonight by Murphy Brown and Hillary Thornall. And those defensive secondary people can tackle for Arkansas. They've not had many misses out in the open field. Dixon Holman is our referee. Holding, 10 yard penalty, still first down. It's still first down. They need the 28 yard line for a first down. The ball is at the 11, so it's first and 17. Just when we talk about not many penalties being sure. called, a major one. Davis would like to complete one here. Quick. Top pass to Edward Thomas, and he's quickly knocked down. Steve Atwater got him. As Thomas was bent backwards, Nathaniel White was also there, and uh, Ricky Williams. Good size in that secondary. Atwater's about six foot four, 200 pounder sophomore. The corner's got good size. It's a good looking football team, Arkansas. Yeah, and they're well coached. Kenny Hatfield did quite a job at Air Force before coming to Arkansas, and he's picked right up. He's taking over the Razorbacks. Second down. Davis coming for the sideline, and it's picked off again. I think it's Washington. Charles Washington, his second interception of the night. They were throwing for Matt Pearson. Nathaniel White was also there. And the second interception tonight by Charles Washington. Well, you see here now, he, he just underthrows this ball a little bit. Now, Washington makes a great break on the ball. They were almost fighting for that, for that interception, but Washington came up with it. Whenever you get that underthrown ball, and people are sitting back there in zone coverage, they get a real good jump on planet. And Arkansas could really put a dent into the fading hopes of the Cougars here should they punch it in. First and 10, Arkansas, the ball at the Houston 28. The handoff goes to Joe Johnson. He has scored a touchdown here tonight, and he gets down inside the 22-yard line. And Orsby Crenshaw, the left corner for Houston, was the first man to hit him, and then David Bearden also dropped him. Take a look at the little fake. Here comes Johnson back through the, through the hole, and again, that uh, counter play where they lead one way and come back the other, freezes those linebackers. They're getting good position for their uh, offensive lineman block. Joe Johnson's had a good night. This is a second down play for the Razorbacks. Derek Thomas. He'll be close to another Arkansas first down as Gary McGuire out of Silsby got him along with Robert Jones. That's a first down. They're now at the uh, Houston 18 yard line. Now yeah, they've got a mixture of their offensive linemen in there now. Again, they keep shuffling people in there. Look at the size of that Mike Benson, a freshman 300 pounder from Nashville. On the running play, Van Dyke to the 10 yard line and he's tripped up by Anthony Young, a sophomore. He's a native of Houston, went to Fur High School here in the Houston area. 
And one of the things that's happened, now take a look at the size of these off offensive linemen. Now they're just blowing it. At this stage of the game, you've, your defensive linemen are getting a little bit tired. You're looking at Manis, who's about a 215-pounder in there. Montgomery, a 246-pounder. Warren, 240. They're going against 300-pounders, 275-pounders, 270-pounders. If you think that's fun for 60 minutes, try it sometime. The quarterback is John Bland. He replaced the injured Greg Thomas. The handoff to Derek Thomas. He's close, but he didn't get in. He's down to the one. It will be first and goal, Arkansas. Derek Hoskins and Orsby Crenshaw held Derek Thomas out of the end zone. Again, you see the offensive, Arkansas offensive line really controlling the line of scrimmage now. And a couple of missed tackles, and this is what'll happen. Here's another. Here's another look at it. Team cut back inside. You see the double team block down there. How far they've got the defensive lineman driven downfield. When you put two on one and they drive him right back in the linebacker's laps, it's very difficult for that linebacker to make the play. The quarterback dies for the touchdown. First and goal, and it was kept by Bland, who went in over the right side of his offensive line. And Arkansas now leading 29 to 13, and their supporters are very happy. Yeah. And the point after attempt will come, and Houston up against it with 4.50 left. Well, those turnovers just kill you, especially yeah. when you turn over in your own territory. We'll Again. take one more look. See the offensive line firing out. Now, they're really controlling the line of scrimmage right now. That's a combination of... Point after here by Kendall Trainer. And that makes it 30 to 13 in favor of the Razorbacks. Southwest Conference football continues on Home Sports Entertainment right after this timeout. Do something miraculous here, and they're going to get their hands on the football after it's booted away by Kenny Franklin. And back for Houston, Reggie Rhodes and Vernell Ramsey. Rhodes is the man nearest to you. Here comes the boot. Rhodes cuts in front of Ramsey. Across the 20, looking for somewhere to go across the 30. And downfield for Arkansas, leading the charge, Steve Atwater, along with Nathaniel White. Well, Ed, what do you think? Houston's really got it. Well, they're in a tough spot now. No, no question a tough spot. And no question that the depth of the Arkansas team has begun to show. They've been, they've been using a lot of backs, with fresh running, running uh, backs in there. A lot of big offensive linemen that where you're down, that last scoring drive, of course, after the turnover only took, had to go 28 yards, only a minute and 45 seconds in five plays. But you wear down. If your defensive line has played this whole ball game, going against those 300 pounders, and they've been alternating them, just a matter of time in most cases. And they've never missed a beat with Bland in their quarterback, did they? First down call here for Mike Davis. He's in trouble. A flag is thrown. He got to the 31 for a one-yard pickup if the play stands, but Houston may have been holding again. Well, this is the other problem you run into. You're really not a, a complete passing team. You get the other quarterback in there, and uh, your offensive lineman, the inexperience, shows up. Uh, Arkansas knows right now those defensive linemen that uh, we can forget about the run a little bit. The only way they can get back in the game is put the ball in the air. So they lay their ears back and go after you. And you get those holding penalties. Albert Crawford made the tackle, a freshman who was redshirted a year ago. He's out of Little Rock. And they're going to take the penalty. Holding, 10 yards, offense. Hey, Arkansas is going to be a good football team for years to come. You look at those defensive people that they got backing up, a whole lot of good freshmen. Really not an old football team. Harris, the linebacker, is a freshman. Atwater, Lloyd, and uh, brothers in their secondary, three sophomores. And other than Foreman in the backfield, their uh, offensive people are fairly young. First and 20, Davis throws. He completes it as Bradford made the tackle on Jet Brown, who has been one of the bright spots for Houston tonight catching the ball. He, he uh, is accountable for their only touchdown as he made quite a catch at the goal line, a leaping catch. Houston has TCU here next week. You'll see it on HSE. Then they go to Texas and Texas Tech. Neither one of those will be easy. And they'll finish up here against Rice in the Astrodome. TCU did an excellent job for three quarters against Baylor. They were leading in going into the fourth quarter today. Second and long. 
facing the Cougars here. They're going to put Pearson on a wing. Davis has time. Throws complete for Brown out to the 36-yard line and tackled quickly by Kerry Owens out of Stuttgart, Arkansas. And Pearson's been shaken up. Boy, Houston's been Get besieged by injuries this year. Get Brown is uh, Brown is the man. Down. Well, he's put on a good exhibition. He breaks to the outside and then he comes back underneath. You see, watch him come underneath there now. You see, he started to the outside, came underneath. Again, good concentration on the football. Let's see what happens to him as he goes down. Yeah, looks like that ankle was uh, twisted a little bit, but he's up walking off on his own. And that tackler just got that ankle twisted a little bit. You see, the evening he's had five catches for 55 yards. He's been really impressive, Jerry. Yeah, well, right now he might not be Jet. He might be Turbo. Turbo Brown. Looks like he's all right, though. They still need four yards for the first down. It's third down. The ball at the 36 of Houston. Davis again. Incomplete. Intended for Thomas. Coverage by Eric Bradford. He and Carl Bradford are not related to Arkansas players. And it falls incomplete. And Houston will uh, go for it on fourth down here. Hey, well, Carl's out of Paris, Texas. And Eric's out of Fayetteville, Arkansas. Well, you look at that secondary of Arkansas, and they all, practically every one of them has interceptions. They, they threw a flag, but apparently what is uh, uh, against Houston and declined by Arkansas, they're going to make them boot it away. I thought Houston was going to go for it, but now they send on Simon Rodriguez. And dropping back is Charles Washington. He's been right in the middle of things tonight for the Razorbacks. Mr. Washington, he's intercepted two passes tonight. Rodriguez has a good night punting. They're coming after him, and he gets it away, and he hangs out of beauty. Washington at the 20, juggles it, falls on it at the 23. Boy, isn't that funny? That's two fumbles tonight, and both of them fell right back into Arkansas's hands. When you need those breaks, when you're struggling like Houston, they never seem to go your way. David Bearden was the first man downfield. That was a 44-yard punt. There he is. He's looking in right there, but right at the end, he took his eyes off the ball to look ahead. He looked in all the way, and right at the end, he wanted to see where his blockers were and what he could do with it and that's what caused the fumble a new quarterback Jim Simpson in there the NBA basketball season almost upon us we'll tell you about it in a moment 258 left first down Arkansas from their 23 Jim Simpson is the new quarterback and he hands off here and the tackle was made by Johnny Norwood is J.I. Brown a transfer from the Air Force out of Kansas City Missouri carries for the first time the NBA basketball season almost upon us and viewers in the Houston and Dallas markets in for a big season of action here on HSC. The Dallas Mavericks open up their home season on Halloween night, October 31st against the Utah Jazz featuring the return of guard Daryl Griffith. He'll bomb away. Viewers in the Dallas Fort Worth area will see that contest. Here's a running play. And Aaron Jackson doesn't get a whole lot as the uh, tackle was made. On the part of the Cougars, by young Mr. Kennedy, that is Dennis Kennedy. And the nice thing about when you're in Arkansas position, you give all those youngsters a chance to get the opportunity to play, keeps everybody's morale up. Jackson's in there in Van Dyke's place. You, you look at Benson in there. You look at uh, Morris in there, offensive lineman. This is a third down play. Simpson keeps. He's smacked. And he will not get the first down, or so it appears from here, as Tyrone Jones brought him down. Jones, a red shirt last year. Oh, he got the first down. I'll be done. He did pick up the first down. Well, they got practically their entire second offensive line and some of their third backs in there. It's a great position to be in when you're coaching on that sideline. You know that they're all they can do is help these young people. You know next week's practice they're going to be excited because they did have the opportunity to play. We've got less than 90 seconds left in this one arkansas comfortably in front 30 to 13 and simpson runs the option here and keeps and gets knocked down leading the charge roger anderson a freshman also a red shirt last year for houston he's out of tyler and now houston will take a timeout with a minute 18 left so bill yeoman will have his guys fight to the very last second As we look at some of the Arkansas fans here, they're happy. We started to tell you about all the basketball action coming up on HSE. Let's 
fill in our Houston viewers. The Rockets open their home season Thursday, November 6th against the Los Angeles Clippers. Norm Nixon and Derek Smith and company will be in town. And you'll see that game in the Houston market. NBA action in the Houston and Dallas areas on Home Sports Entertainment. Should be an exciting basketball season. Yeah. Mavericks doing well up in that market. The Rockets are certainly going to do well down here. They'll have some interesting head-on collisions, and you'll see them on HSE. I'll tell you what, with Samson and Olajuwon in that Houston lineup, you and I can play guard. Except you wouldn't give it to me. You'd shoot it all the time. You'd get those guys mad at you. Here's Simpson keeping the ball. Now he pitches it. And J.R. Brown knocked down, goes out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Tyrone Jones ran him out, along with Johnny Norwood. Along with that, I don't think Blue Eyes Whirl would give either one of us any credit. No, he'd shoot it himself, wouldn't he? And McCoy McLemore, he'd set some big picks, wouldn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah. You ever see McLemore play? Yeah, sure. I can remember when he played. I'm I not old. I think he had five elbows. And he uses them all. They're both doing a good job working together. They got good. Uh, they're doing a good job announcing those games. We've got a minute 12 left in this one. Arkansas leading 30 to 13. Wayne Stewart now in the backfield for the Razorbacks. And the give is to Aaron Jackson. And Jackson has another first down for Arkansas near the 45-yard line. Roger Anderson on the tackle. And uh, that's another first down for the Razorbacks. But there's a flag down, and I think Arkansas held that time. Too little, too late. <laughs> the penalty. Well, they've made relatively few mistakes tonight, Edward. Yeah, they're a good-looking football team. And they really have good game plan. They, they know what to do with this uh, type of offense. They had a lot of success running the counter plays, which made it very difficult for McGuire and Harper, the linebackers. Big offensive linemen working against a smaller defensive lineman. Just you wear them down a little bit. They're fine. That's why their record is going to be 6-1 and one after this game. And, you know, the ball people are out and about watching things, viewing things. This team should go to a bowl, don't you think? I would think they've got an excellent opportunity to go to, to a bowl. Good following. And a lot of people that follow them and stay with them. Yeah, they're they're great fans in Arkansas. And they got another tight end, the third tight end in there, in there now, number 95, Jim Kessinger out of Fort Campbell, uh, Kentucky. And they've gotten himself in a position that, you know, even if they have some injuries down the line, they're going to have people that had a chance to play. First and very long for Arkansas. They're at their 30. They need the Houston 45 for a first down. J.R. Brown to about the 33-yard line. And they run nothing fancy. They, they just concentrate on running a few plays and running them well. And Houston no longer interested in stopping the clock, so well, they only have one timeout left, so it would be kind of really futile right now. With with it being first down and 30, with one left, one timeout left. One would think you run one more play and that would do it, barring another penalty. That uh, should do it. There's 23 seconds left on the game clock. Arkansas about to win another one. Jim Simpson, the quarterback, stays in bounds. And he's tackled by Tyrone Jones, and we're down to well, six Houston. seconds. Houston called the last timeout. They call timeout with five seconds left. And they'll have to run one more play. You coached in college where, Xavier? Xavier University. Long time ago. Long time ago? Oh, I coached in college 13 years. Seven of it as a head coach back in those days. Yeah. College football is great and exciting. A chance to work with some youngsters. Leather helmets. Yeah, leather helmets, face masks. Oh, come on, Jerry. Be nice now. Bill Yeoman, he's churning inside. You know, he's won so many games in the past. When you struggle like this, it's tough to stomach. Well, it's really, you know, it's really killing him. And, and probably working harder, one of the things you do when you know you're struggling, you know you don't have maybe quite the personnel that you've had in the past and the, the, the grades that hurt him and the people they lost early in the year, you really work hard even to stay in games and be respectable. And I, this should do it. This should be the final play of the game. Simpson, the quarterback. And an inside handoff. And that play went absolutely nowhere as the game ends. On that little plunge by the running back, 
Ken Massa, and there goes Ken Hatfield. The Arkansas coach, he'll head for Bill Yeoman, and they'll shake hands. It was a hard-fought game, but obviously the Arkansas Razorbacks, a nationally ranked team, very much in control for a good portion of this game, and they win in convincing fashion as Arkansas defeats Houston by a score of 30 to 13. And Bill Yeoman heading for the Houston dressing room and some of the players congratulating Coach Ken Hatfield. Well, He's done a heck of a job there, hasn't he? Well, the one thing Bill was saying himself, well, that's the end of four consecutive teams in the top 20 and five out of the seven games they faced people in the top 20, and that's a difficult schedule to face. 30 to 13, the final. Arkansas beat Houston. You're watching Southwest Conference football on Home Sports Entertainment. <laughs>